this should be really fun and uh and paradox i know you've kind of taken a peek at both uh the pokemon in the early stages as well as the logic uh, uh from from what you said you don't have to spoil anything uh, it doesn't look too bad per se um so i've looked at the starters in the first couple of routes i've looked at a couple of pokemon on there is an absolute monster if they find it, which is always good to see. <laughs> but, Man, when uh, you say when you say monster, it makes me think of something like Thunderbolt Mewtwo. I don't know, you know, <laughs> you know something I'm that could be very not quite that good, fun. but uh, it is a <laughs> very very solid mon. Yeah, and of course that's always. I, I always like to break this into three stages, which is the early stage, which is finding a good main Pokemon. By the way, we're seeing Sudowoodo, Golbat, and Pichu as the starters here. Uh, finding a good main, something that really is going to be top tier, you know, at least A minus tier that's going to carry you throughout the entirety of this game. That's really the first stage as you make your way through your first key item checks, uh, your first few badges here. And once you get yourself on solid footing, that's when you start to worry about the logic uh, of the ROM and getting into, of course, that really crazy mid game. But uh, uh, I saw that Snowbear picked the Golbat. Did uh, Horse do the same yesterday? They've both taken the Golbat with with the Bind TM. Yes. So if anything, they got a little extra cash in their pocket here. Um, yeah. So as usual, of course, all the key items and HMs are shuffled, 26 of them in total. They don't have to get every single one, unlike uh, uh, in the Snow Bear Wingage race yesterday, where they did eventually pick up all 26 key items and uh, HMs. They don't have to do that. They just need all the ones that help them finish the game. And of course, all the badges are randomized as well. So uh, off and running, can't catch anything quite yet on uh, Route 29. But we'll be uh, seeing our first set of encounters in 30 on their way to Mr. Pokemon's house. Yeah, so early stages of the game. I know you said that uh, there's there's one monster out there <laughs> in terms of main. Uh, and again, not, not to spoil anything, but uh, finding a main is so, so imperative, wouldn't you say? I mean, you pretty much have to run something that's basically A tier. Yeah, you need to find something in the first three routes, I would say. Because after that, it gets less and less likely that you will have a viable main with proper experience. Yeah. Uh, on Snowbear's side, I, I find it funny, and actually Horse got it as well. There's a Crobat on Route 30. Good luck outspeeding that, especially with the prior evolution. Oh, look, Pseudo Wudo! Wow, Pseudo Wudo on Snowbear's side. Uh, Horse is going to catch the Crobat. I, I would honestly say that's a very underrated main Pokemon. Its speed is excellent, uh, it has great physical attack. Of course, it is a poison type. Uh, it didn't look like it had a great move set though. But uh, at the very least, you put that out front and you know you're not gonna get outsped by anything in the first few routes. However, its offenses are oh, usually look, a bit lacking. Did it, did it have did it have headbutt? Is that what uh, I the, saw? Because the goal bat starter had headbutt apparently okay the golbat starter had headbutt oh that's a level 10 celebi yeah not not bad especially coming at level 10 i mean uh, i might be partial to running celebi or whatnot uh but excellent idea from horse to save in front of the tree because you pretty much have to yolo ball uh these level 10s it's going to be hard to damage it to uh get it down to any kind of point where the catch rate's going to improve but not showing the horse like. anything it's done yeah force like three turns in a row uh he did get the catch and looks like snow bear is about to do the same in terms of the headbutt uh the celebi has giga drain sludge and bomb thunderbolt sludge wow bomb. wow that's definitely one of the best uh celebis i've seen in quite some time snow bear finding a golduck on his screen oh i love golduck uh, so this is actually really nice on both players' sides because one of the features uh, and one of the settings we use for key item randomizers is called good early mains. And by the way, that gold duck has tri attack, not bad. Uh, good early or good early wilds make sure that any Pokemon up to level nine is forced fully evolved. However, that does not affect the headbutt trees. So uh, while Celebi and Golduck are both fully evolved Pokemon, that isn't necessarily always the case we can find things that aren't fully evolved and it might uh slow down our players just a bit that was quite a gold duck it's too bad that it uh took snow bear down 
Yeah, he goes one tree over, finds a Yanma. Not quite as good, especially, you know, Yanma doesn't really get viable until Gen 4 when it evolves into a Yan Mega, which is actually quite a great Pokemon, especially with its... It really uh, is. Yeah, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the ability that always speed boosts? Speed boost. It? Yeah, speed boost. There it is. It boosts its speed. Speed boost. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. I've been uh, watching Snow a lot Bear of the... Uh, moving along. Yeah, Snowbear, yeah, we'll just uh, go ahead and try to take out that first youngster fight. Uh, I was going to say I've been watching some of the Battle Factory speedruns from some of the uh, Pokemon speedrunning community, uh, and I guess you kind of learn a lot about the competitive style of Gen 4. Uh, but yeah, Yan Mega kind of in that rotation. So Snowbear and Horse both making it past that first trainer, youngster Mikey. Um, looks like Horse is pretty well set with that Celebi. Just don't get hit by Mega Horn. It's pretty much just the only glaring weakness there. Yeah, Mega Horn uh, will absolutely ruin a Celebi. Yeah. But we'll see if Snowbear tries another set of headbutt trees. All the headbutt trees in Route 29, 30, 31, and 36 uh, all share the same slot, so you're just going to have basically the difference between um, the common trees and the rare trees. By the way, we got a gold duck just in the <laughs> grass. Still has try attack. This one might be a little bit easier to catch, though. Ooh, that gold duck has a decent set of moves. By the way, yes, in speed choice, you can throw a Pokeball while the Pokemon is underground using dig. Ooh, that crit probably <laughs> that crit probably made a uh, snow bear sweat a little bit as it went all the way down to red bar but he will be guaranteed to catch it at this point too yeah that's a pretty angry Golduck. of course Golduck not necessarily the most offensive type pokemon probably in that b maybe b minus tier but that's a pretty solid move set between dig slash and try attack i will pull up its stats quickly so that way we can get a good look at it Usually the uh, the joke within the uh, our randomizer community is that it's uh, rated B for bulky water type, as most water types are. Honestly, I find... if I recall correctly, Golduck's not super bulky, but it's just decent all round. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Golduck, 82 attack, 95 special attack, 85 speed. Yeah. Which, which definitely is pretty good. Some the only unfortunate bulk. thing is that that Golduck that Snowbear has is a physical attacking Golduck as of this point. So he's not making the best use of its better attacking stat. Of course, the special stat. But uh, they will get Surf does... later, which will make that Golduck far stronger. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the right side of the screen, we actually see Horse attacking the gym first instead of, uh, instead of the... Uh, instead of the Sprout Tower, uh, because he did get that level 10 Celebi, so feeling a lot more confident that he can take care of that side of the screen. Uh, by the way, Paradox, I don't know, in the uh, in our whole beginning spiel, in the first eight minutes here, I think we forgot to see what, what our first key item was in Mr. Pokemon's house. Oh, they did pick it up. Um, give me a second and I can get... <laughs> uh, e Eagle Wing says it was the Clear There's Bell. The that clear sounds bell. right. Okay, so... We're so we're not missing too much on either screen here, uh, because Clear Bell is essentially useless in Mystery this run. Mystery Egg Clear Bell, yes. Yeah, so row, row three and our tracker, pretty much the useless items. We don't really get anything uh, out of any of them, except for on occasion the Silver Wing can give us access to the level 60 Lugia, but you need a pretty extraordinary set of circumstances um, to be heading in that direction. But yeah. not impossible, but the clear bell gives us access to Tin Tower, and I don't think we've ever seen anybody go towards Tin Tower yet in any key item randomizer because we don't have easy Tin Tower on. So oh, unlike and Horse being... passed the gym. Yes. Uh, let's see. He picked up the Marsh Badge. Good. Yeah, so he's going. He went for the gym first. It is more efficient uh, routing in that case, especially since he had the level advantage. Hey, look, Lugia. <laughs> yeah, and Snowbear is going to be going uh, the more traditional route, taking Sprout Tower first and then the gym, because it's much easier to attack those trainers, 
you know, the first trainer has three level three Pokemon, then you get two level six Pokemon, a little bit easier to get that more gentle experience curve. And that Golduck will need it. Yeah, perfect synchronization. Actually, kind of funny that both trainers were on the same tile, but of course, Horus has the advantage of having defeated the entire gym at this point. Yeah, so... Uh, something appears to have happened to Horus' stream. There it is. It's back. Oh, yep. Just a little... Just a little bit of, uh glitchiness but no worries we'll keep a we'll keep an eye on their restreams as well um, but obviously Horace did not have any problem with that first fight with the over leveled Celebi at this point Snowbear going through those first uh, experience curves getting just a couple levels under his belt to put that Golduck into range Thing is, even with the legendary experience curve <laughs> working against Horse, that level ten difference is going to help out for quite a while. Yeah, probably through the probably through the first three gyms, you know, the southern portion of Johto, I think will make a difference. Eventually, that does level off um, after a while, and not just the experience curve, but just the leveling progression overall. Is these you know fighting a level three and getting just you know maybe 100 or 200 experience points now doesn't really pay all that much dividends by the time you get to Kanto. But uh, yeah, definitely making for a very easier and a much faster time, more importantly, through the first stage of the game. Uh, by the way, we saw the Golduck learn another physical move in Megahorn. So uh, Snowbear definitely having a decent time with the physical Golduck. It has plenty good moves. Um, just wishing that maybe his attack set was a little bit higher. And of course, Celebi uh, being one of the legendary Pokemon or mythical, if, uh, uh, if you will, has 100 base stat in every single stat. HP, attack, defense, everything. Um, so it's pretty even. And he's got some great special moves to boot for that. So this is actually a really great blitz uh, by Horus, who might be defeating Elder within the 14-minute mark. And that would be uh, Elderly and Faulkner, all within the first 14 minutes of the game, all thanks to Headbutt. Uh, and well, I don't know about you. Who says amazing, though. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, Paradox, uh, but I usually keep the Headbutt tree list open uh, when I start these, you know, just in case I find Headbutt. Because I always like checking both the common trees and the rare trees, which of course vary based on the last digit of your trainer ID. Uh, I didn't see either trainer go into their trainer ID. I think they just chose a tree and said whatever pops out, pops out. Yeah. But uh, I usually like keeping uh, that open, and I think uh, I got I convinced some of my friends to do the same, especially Geospone. Uh, there was one race that we were just doing for fun, and 30 minutes in, I was like, yeah, I found a Mewtwo, and it was in a rare tree. And I think since then, every, our friends always uh, keep the keep the headbutt tree list open, just in case uh, you know you might find something out of that uh, that rare tree, and you need to know where it is. Yeah. But yeah, an excellent, excellent early stage right now for Horse. Thirteen and a half minutes. He's already through Violet City, picking up the egg. Uh, obviously extremely happy with that Celebi in the early game. Snowbear not doing a bad time either, as he's also on the Sage Leaf fight, but he does still have to go through uh, the gym as that well. That Persian had Solar Beam, and that hurt the gold up. Whew. Yeah, no kidding about that. And I believe, was the item the basement key? If I remember correctly. Yes, it was. I will mark that on Horse's screen. So the basement key a little bit uh make you a little bit nervous later on in the run. Yep. Well, it all depends on where the card key is. Yes. If you find it early, that's a great thing. The basement key is now useless. But if <laughs> yeah. If you don't find it, it starts getting very worrisome. Yeah, or other required items, because it is still a time sink even without the 11 fights. 
even just the two fights and all that movement still uh, makes a difference in terms yeah. of that. Uh, we're our, we are going to see a horse pick up the third key item, which is Waterfall. Or uh, not Waterfall, Whirlpool. Whirlpool. And Much as less as useful. It, yes. In fact, most of these items, as of right now, serve no purpose to these runners. The basement key will just linger on a little bit later in the run. Uh, but in the first... Uh, in Southern Johto, there are seven item checks that we're going to see everybody pick up. Mr. Pokemon, Sprout Tower, the Route 32 Pokemon Center. Uh, we'll get to the Farfetch'd item, which is usually cut. And then there's three in Goldenrod, which would be the Bike Shop, uh, Buena, as well as the Underground Shops, which is usually the Coin Case. Between those seven items, we're guaranteed two things. One, the Bicycle. We, we want early bicycle because it, we otherwise that would make too much of a difference in the course of a run yeah if it was just somebody found the bicycle before the other uh, plus we don't want to see everybody walking everybody everywhere we want to speed these games up it is kind of a speed run after all uh the other thing we need is some way to progress beyond goldenrod one way is the squirt bottle and the other is the magnet train pass which we usually deem as early canto uh, and right now we have neither, so within the next four key items, we will be seeing uh, at least two out of those three that I just mentioned. I am sad that neither of them even saw the monster poke on the early routes. Okay, you, you want to uh, enlighten us? Give us a... Uh, just give us a little bit of background information on what they could have found? Okay, so on Route 30... Mm -hmm. There was an Arcanine, and that I Arcanine has Arcanine. Mock Punch, Slash, Arrow Blast, and Swift. Not bad. Just, the nothing walls that moveset. Yeah. Great moveset on a great poke. Um, Ar Arcanine is really, really great. Uh, slightly more physical, but great in both stats. Uh, both attacking and uh, physical attack and special attack. Yep, and that was a full physical Arcanine, too. Snow, uh, Snow Bear just getting through the Faulkner fights. Uh, paralyzed at the end, but lucked out with a last second slash getting himself the Marsh Badge. While well, Horse is already in Slowpoke well. Very, very fast pace from Horse, and this is even without early Bicycle. Because usually you only see these kind of times if Mr. Pokemon gives you the bicycle right away and you get a little extra speed. But yeah, so satisfied with his with the Celebi main, it is really carrying far. That's I, and honestly, main wise, Horse definitely has the advantage as of this point. Oh yeah, no doubt. Oh, they're not gonna find that TM. That's sad. <laughs> I just took a quick look at the DMs. There is a Drill Peck TM. Ooh. But it is a random on the crowned TM. Well. We do pick up quite a few of those. And speaking of TMs, that's a, it's a good point in this run is that um, I like to think that the difference between key item randos and bingos is that it's mo you're more dependent on what Pokemon you use rather than what move set you have, because throughout the course of the run we're gonna have access to a whole lot of TMs. In fact, we might even see players go out of their way to try to pick up a few TMs to really boost the move set of what should be a good Pokemon that they're going to use. Oh, that is a TM that they will skip though. I looked at its location. That is rather unfortunate yeah is but it, it I, is a spot that is just a, a little out of the way that we never st set foot in yeah and that to me and correct me if i'm wrong that to me says they're probably that would probably be a mount mortar tm um it's actually the route 35 tm route 35 i've i've gone out of my way to pick up that tm a lot really yeah, so so especially in the early game, a lot of the TMs that we pick up on the ground is one's going to be Union Cave, which is pretty yep. normal. Um, and then the next ones that are kind of on our path is both in Route 35, all you have to do is fight that bug catcher that's right in front of it, and the National Park TM. 
And I think those are two pretty easy TMs to pick up. In fact, I usually find myself using the Route 35 shortcut around National Park quite frequently, especially if I have access to cut and I don't have fly, just taking that little detour and you know spending the time investment to fight the bug catcher, which only has one Pokemon. You can actually save a lot of time instead of having to go through that gate transition where you can't uh, bike through it. Um, I, I think you can save a lot of time and you just get access to that TM. So uh, I wouldn't put it past them to try to pick up the Route 35 TM, especially if, uh, you know, if you're if you're looking for move sets, as mentioned, you might go out of your way to pick up some TMs to to boister that move set. So I wouldn't put it past them. True, but it would definitely benefit Horse over Snow Bear, and he's not going to mm -hmm. check TMs with that move set. That is yeah, a and very it, strong move set. Yeah, for especially on uh, especially on horses' side, um, he's at he's got such a great pace going on. He's already in Bugsy's gym at the twenty minute mark. I mean, at that point, you might also just say, "I'm just gonna blitz, blitz big time." The only thing that might derail him a little bit again is how we progress past Goldenrod. And if we're forced into early Kanto, that could be very problematic, even for. Uh, the main he has at the moment. It's it's something to keep in the back of your head. If he gets the squirt bottle, I think he's A-OK. -okay. But yeah, he is on the Bugsy fight right now. Oh, that's an easy kill on the Graveler. Yeah, yeah Just easy drink. Giga Drain. Yeah, what a, what a terrific uh, start to this game for Horse. Bugsy at the 21 minute mark. That's one of the fastest that we've seen in quite some time. Earning himself the Fog Badge, a very important badge to see in the early game. Will definitely help once we get Surf. Yeah, and, and a reminder that while all the key items and all the badges are randomized, their effects are, of course, not randomized. So the Fog Badge will give us access to Surf. It also uh, gives us the Obedience up to level 50. Uh, all the badge effects, including their badge boosts, a boost to Ghost-type moves, is all tied to the badge. It's just a matter of who is holding it and it's going to deli deliver it to us. Uh, so yeah, it is a uh, it's certainly blitz pace right now for Horus. That is uh, really incredible, already on Rival 2. Should make quick work. I don't. I don't see uh, any reason. This is definitely. I have to say, this is the best Celebi that I have ever seen in all of my history, which is only a couple months of playing Pokemon Crystal Randomizers. But I've never seen a Celebi that's been this good. Yeah, this is easily the best Celebi I've ever seen. You got Stab Giga Drain, Thunderbolt. Uh, he'll probably give it Surf at some point. Uh, and then Sludge Bomb for, you know, uh, uh, Sludge Bomb in case you find it, you know, a Blissey Wall or, or other special walls. You got that physical attack under your belt. So yeah, that is a really, types. really good main. And unfortunately, you're seeing the difference not just in, not just the main level, but on Snow Bear's side, he's just got bodied by this Machamp, wasn't able to finish it off, and that Golduck actually just fainted to it as well. Looks like he was... That Sacred uh, looks Fire like he got, Burn Yeah, that Sacred Fire Burn. Troublesome. Especially for how he was using that Golduck, which is as a physical attacker. Golbat, the Golbat able to finish it off, so thankfully he might not take a wipe in this case. Oh, I wonder if he's going to... Yep, just going to escape rope back out and go back to heal. Yeah, looks like a... Uh... Oop, did I bring that wrong? Horse found looks a like Master Ball, which will be good if yeah. he runs into a Roamer. As, as well as, uh, I believe, Surf was the far-fetched item. Yes, it was. So he already has access to... Surf because he has Surf in the Fog Badge. In fact, I looked away from the screen for a second. Did I, uh, did, did he happen to Surf across the water in Ilic Forest? Because when you get the when you get the access to Surf that early, 
just by surfing through that little piece of water, you can skip about a third of the forest, which is uh, kind of nice. A little bit of uh, a little bit of a time save. You do miss out on a couple items. Yeah, he didn't. He, I looked away for a second. Uh, Snow Bear continuing with the uh, with the rocket um, slowpoke well fights at the moment. And we're gonna see Horse take a look at the TMs now. And he, so, so here's what kind of to my point is that. While Horse is certainly very much satisfied with his moveset, might as well take a look um, at what that had to offer. I saw at least Vice Grip uh, on that. It was uh, Agility, Vice Grip, and one of the like Outrage Thrash Pedal Dance. Uh, one of those three is the TMs in Goldenrod. It would be Thrash. Thrash? Because it was works two to three turns and confuses the user. I just looked at the TMs. Okay, very good. Uh, ooh, how about that? So Horse just picked up the pass. Well, that's our Canto and, access. And that's our Canto access. And if he doesn't find Squirt Bottle, which is no longer guaranteed in the early stage here, then we have what's called early Canto, where you can't progress up to Ecritique City because it's Sudowoodle locked. Instead, you have to go to Canto and try to figure out where to go from there. And there's, usually there's only a couple options. In this case, the first option could be the Fishing Guru, uh, which usually has the super rod, could have something even as simple as the SS ticket or the squirt bottle to get you back out of Kanto. Uh, by the way, he got the lost item. That would be another check, uh, is that when you get deposited in Saffron City, you can just check that lost item. It's a fetch quest item. Gives you another chance there. Uh, and with the ability to surf, he does have the ability to fight two gyms that are in logic, which would be Surge's gym and Janine's gym. You can also fight Sabrina. It's not in logic in the early game. And what that means is that Sabrina does is not a required gem to get to your seventh badge, which would unlock the radio tower sequence. It might be required beyond that, but not in the early game. So as of right now, it looks like he'll probably go after a couple key item checks and then see if he needs to go after some of those gym battles, which can be problematic for a Pokemon uh, that isn't quite to level as the Celebi is. Yes, you got it out of Headbutt Trees, but Surge's ace is, ace is I believe, 46, and Janine's ace is 39. Uh, and he just picked up the bicycle. So Horse has cleared all the items in the first stage of the game, Southern, Southern Johto. And we know that he definitely has to go to Kanto now with the pass. Yeah, to at least pick up some items, but perhaps to also fight some gyms. And again, level 19 Celebi, probably not going to fare too well, even against the quote-unquote weakest of gym leaders, which would be Janine and her ace at level 39. You would need a lot of X items to cover that gap. But Meanwhile, yeah, he's we have probably... Snow Bear working his way through Bugsy. Yep, paralyzed no less. So, uh, having some, having some trouble getting through these fights, especially with all the status effects between the Sacred Fire Burn and now the paralysis that we just saw. Yeah, not not a particularly good fight. This is a stark difference on these uh, two screens right now. He did manage to defeat, get the fog badge. So Snowbear did get to get that at the 28 minute mark, which is already a five minute difference between these two runners, which is uh, re really crazy in the early games. It's uh, it is wild. Yeah, that that Celebi, as early as he found it, has been amazingly useful. Because Snowbear is still on good time for normal runs, but yeah, to defeat Bugsy within the first thirty minutes is fine. It's it's honestly 
a very good time. It's just, as we know, that horse is absolutely blitzing through this. I mean, he got through Whitney before the 30-minute mark, uh, earning himself the rising badge. Yeah, I think I've only been able to pull off this pace once. Uh, I'm not actually sure what horse's PB is in these. Uh, we definitely know that if you can get a sub 210, you're definitely in the top tier of uh, most runs. We've only seen maybe a handful of sub two hour runs and a lot of things need to go right in that case. And one of those things is definitely good logic and good mains. Like you would need like a Mewtwo or a Raikou or a Zapdos main with a good move set to boot. He's definitely got the good move set and he's got the, he's got the blitz pace down right now. This is a very, very fast pace. Yeah, because I think our best times have been by Snorms so far. Yeah, and Snorms, of course, a uh, you know former speedrunner himself, so he has a lot of the speedrunning tech to to rely on, but obviously very good knowledge of the game. Snorms wait awaiting in the finals. Uh, All right, horse didn't turn in the lost item. He got flash. flash. That could be useful. It could be required. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where like great speedrunners they don't need flash they pretty much got all those dark caves memorized as well snow bear picking up surf and also having the access to use it as well flash technically never required uh but it does provide a bit of logic uh in the terms in terms of uh making sure that uh, everybody has access to picking up the game uh, rock tunnel is one of those weird places where uh we don't want you to go through Rock Tunnel blind if you don't have to. In well, this case, technically, uh, technically, but Flash most players, will be required by the logic. Yeah, but most players will just you know brave it anyways. They'll pull up a map uh, like myself and uh, and call it good. By the way, Snowbear showed us that you can surf through uh, Ilex Forest and save a little bit of time there. Horse is going for the uh, the Super Raw, the Fishing Guru item. He was taking it careful on that first. Uh, he, he did set to the make death sure he could... I think he uh I think he also oh he found the squirt bottle so he will not have to fight uh he will not have to fight Janine Janine or Surge uh, he will be able to progress normally through Johto now and be able to hang on to that Celebi which of course has a terrific move set yes he did set up that death warp uh oh uh oh. Uh oh. That Kingdra has not shown him a move yet. Oh no, not this again. Oh, that is. That is troublesome on Horses' screen. Oh, he finally showed him Bubble, which should be more than enough. <laughs> wow. It took, I think, like five or six moves for it, for it to even show him an attacking move. That was. <laughs> that was a little bit scary. But yeah, Mind Reader Lock on. Good meme uh, from the Kingdra. Uh, by the way, we do see Snowbear it, in... It had to be absolutely sure that bubble was going to hit. Yeah, <laughs> extreme aim. <laughs> that fight could have went absolutely horribly uh, if that Kingdra had four non-damaging moves. Then he'd have to kill it with a level five Golbat. Which I don't even think would happen. I think he. I think one I, would, would have to struggle. start using Struggle. <laughs> which would just waste minutes to get to that point to exhaust all your moves one way or another and you would lose all the time saved from a death warp but yeah we are we are seeing horse what who by the way is in such a strong blitz he pretty much passed by snow bear who was just arriving to goldenrod and he had already taken his trip to kanto to pick up two key items snow bear getting the lost item as well Uh, but to your point, to, to your point, Paradox, Horse actually did skip both of the TMs that he could have picked up on Route 35 as well as National Park, uh, yep. as is the strength of his moveset. Uh, he makes his way to the pseudo Oro, which is a Magmar. Ooh. Honestly, I'd probably pick this up. It is at the same level. Ooh, Zap Cannon. Um... It's not a bad idea to have a level 20 in your back pocket in case something crazy happens in the next few fights. Also, Magmar is a very good Pokemon. It's unfortunately frail for the late game, but I do love me some Mamgar. Yeah. 
A blue officer! Yup. Got the uh, the undercover officer. It's it's a weird thing with sprites. Oh, by the way, by the oh, way. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That that magmar had a moveset. Ooh. I, I saw things that could definitely be good. I am going to pull up its uh, moveset so that way we know exactly what that was. Because it looked gonna... angry. And, yeah, if you didn't see it right off the bat, I just pulled it up. That mag... The mag... Ma magmar, or Mamgar, as uh, <laughs> you guys have drilled into my brain over the uh, last few months here, has Zap Cannon, Confuse Ray, Body Slam, and Crunch. Yeah. A very, very usable uh, magmar. It's too bad it unlearned its flamethrower. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that... Was that an er early move? That was its second move, so one of the level one moves. Which Zap Cannon is one of them. If it had just been rearranged, it could have had Flamethrower. Yeah. But uh, I would say that the Celebi still has a just marginally slightly better moveset. By the way, we are seeing Snowbear pick up Kenya, which is kind of a, you might think, a kind of weird move because you're not heading that way, but... If you don't have if you don't have fly, teleport can be a very good move. And as we've kind of calculated out, um, it's about a three percent chance or so for any given Pokemon to have the move teleport. So if you think you might be behind, you might get a little bit of an advantage. Might might do you well. Uh, oh, by the way, I was just checking the replay. Uh, Horse did pick up the card key, which was out of the item finder house. So that a big find, one of our required items, uh, definitely takes away the pain of having the basement key, but not the card key, uh, because if the card key is in its vanilla location, that is nine extra fights, perhaps up to 11 extra fights, based on the logic that you would have to do. Big time waste. Uh, but having the card key certainly will give you a uh, sigh of relief in that case. Of course, when we talk about required items, if you are new to the key item randomizer scene, we'll refresh you. Don't worry. Uh, all the key items and HMs are shuffled with themselves. He got the blue card after defeating the Kimono Girls as well. Uh, we don't need to pick up all 26 of these items. We only need the a combination of eight uh, in the in the end to actually defeat the game. Now, things like the bicycle and fly are certainly very useful. But six absolutely required items are the secret potion, the card key, the machine part, and the HMs one, three, and four, which is cut, surf, and strength. If you have those six items, you can progress through the entirety of the game. You also need the entirety of your Kanto and map access. So two of the following between the SS ticket, the pass, and the squirt bottle, which we've seen already on Horses' side. He's got the pass and the squirt bottle so he can progress through the entirety of the map, no problem. So if you have a combination of those eight items, you're good to go for the entire game. You don't have to pick up anything else, but you know, as mentioned, the bike is pretty useful. Same with fly, that will save you a lot of time. Plus there are more item checks than not. So we'll, we'll be seeing these players pick up, yay, around 20 plus of the 26 items. Uh, kind of on the par by the time we get to the end. But yeah, horse is already through the Kimono Girls. Uh, Snow Bear is taking his trip to Kanto at this point. Uh, so Horse has a yay about eight minute lead or so, eight to nine minutes. Uh, that Celebi just wrecking the early game, getting it out of the headbutt trees uh, with an excellent move set between Giga Drain, uh, Giga Drain Thunderbolt, uh, sludge bomb, sludge bomb, and surf. now having taught it surf. That is a terrific move set that he has there. Snowbear do does a uh, hand in the lost item, gets flash, and horse just defeated rival three. So uh, we actually don't have his audio to listen to the roamers, but no I will we'll get it on Snowbear's side in a, in, yep, in a I few minutes it, time. I will have it ready when we get to Snowbear. Yeah, so the starters, uh, Paradox, go uh, talk us through the starters. I know you have the list up, uh, and I don't remember them all off the top of my head. Well, wait, both I think I do. It was it was Golbat, Sudowoodo, and Pichu, correct? Pichu, yes. Yes. Which, um, 
very unfortunate set of starters as none of them is going to be runnable, but the Golbat at least has speed to run away from wild encounters. Mm -hmm, which is what they both chose. Uh, they both The Golbat came with headbutt. So that is how Horse found the Celebi, was in a headbutt tree. Snowbear gave it a try. He found uh, a Golduck, he did, but he found uh, a Golduck not the Golduck that, he's that, running. Yeah, he found a Golduck. It killed him. By the way, Snowbear getting the leftovers out in Celadon. He actually took the different way. He might be checking the TMs in Celadon while he's here. Um, so he just found a different Golduck at a lower level, just level 3, and decided it had a great physical move set, though Golduck not the greatest of physical attackers. But he did get Surf, so he does have Surf on that Golduck as of now. Uh, Horse having a little bit of difficulty on that first fight in the gym. He got paralyzed. And that is slowing him down marginally here. By the way, Snowbear just checked the TMs in Celadon. Uh, one of which was Try Attack, I saw right off the uh, right off the bat here. I would like to see what the other ones were. I'm just looking at the replay now. Let's see here. TM10 steals half of the damage inflicted. That looks like Absorb. Uh, TM11, a high spinning, a high speed spinning attack, which would be Rapid Spin. TM17, an attack that never misses. Swift, if I'm not mistaken there. Faint attack, actually. Faint you attack. got Absorb okay. right. Yeah, I got Absorb right. Uh, TM18 fires three kinds of beams at once. That was the try <laughs> attack that I saw. Uh, and if you looked at TM37, a move that may cause paralysis, which I find funny because that could be one of many things. Sometimes you like to think, oh, that could be Thunder Punch or Thunderbolt or Thundershock, but it could also be Stun Spore. It is unfortunately Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave, yeah, because it's not 100% accuracy. So it says may cause paralysis instead of guaranteed which I believe would be uh, Zap Cannon in that case. I'm getting a little bit better with the TMs. I'm not as good with the uh, the Roamer Cries, but the TMs I'm starting to get down a little bit better. It's the Paralysis one that's always going to throw me off a bit. Because I think one time I didn't save for it, I'm like, oh, great, an Electric-type move, and it was just Stun Spore, and I'm like, really... Uh, Snowbear is heading down towards the Fishing Guru. Ooh, he hits an optional. That might not be really good because if he set up a Death Warp, he's actually uh, one trainer too early. That could be really problematic for Snowbear. Yep, he set up the Death Warp, and unfortunately he's going to get a Death Warp before he even reached the item because of his uh, not perfect Ooh. movement. You need to not stutter on your way down Route 12. Uh, if you don't stutter... You're golden. But that little stutter step, even though he was off screen, uh, trainers do load one tile, or actually I think it's, yeah, one tile off screen they load. And in that case, like the rotator, he starts rotating. So yeah, if you don't stutter, if you just gun for it, you can make it pass. But unfortunately he had to take an early death warp. Uh, but he will be picking up the squirt bottle item here from the fishing guru. Again, probably good news for Snowbear. Uh, I'm not sure why, he, when he was in Celadon, that he didn't take a stab at trying to find a new main anyways, which would be a potentially level 27 to 33 main. That could be better than the Golduck. Meanwhile, we have Horse, Horse just destroying Morty. Yep, he Ooh, got through Morty. Storm Badge. Storm Badge, of course, is half of the equation to earning fly. Uh, so Paradox, uh, just a uh, um, not enlighten me, but uh, let's let's discuss a little bit in terms of main swapping, especially when you have the ability to do a Kanto access. Uh, if you were in the situation that Snow Bear was in, uh, you got the Golduck. It has a great physical move set, but you know Golduck might be B tier, and it's not the best physical attacker. He was in Celadon. He picked up leftovers. He looked he looked at the TMs while he was there. He could have gone to Cycling Road, which has level 27 to 33 Pokemon. Would you have taken that opportunity to say, hey, I got a chance to main switch to something that could be 13 levels higher and potentially a better Pokemon? Would, would you take that investment? 
at this point, it could be a very good idea, even with the minute or so time loss of going in there. If you find a good enough main, then you can actually make up that time later. Yeah, and it's kind of like how Horse was going so fast in the early game, having a level 10 out of the headbutt trees. You kind of get the same situation as you're getting an overleveled Pokemon bringing it back to Johto, and you got a level advantage. By the way, shiny Blastoise uh, on Horse's screen. I love Blastoise. That might be another good Pokemon to just catch and have in your back pocket. Again, the Selby's level 25. The Blastoise is level 30. But he might be just getting it for the EXP. And he got the machine part out of the water. Excellent stuff. So that now gives Horse his third out of the six required Go Mode items, as uh, we call them. But yeah, I think if I were in Snowbear's situation, Golduck is probably not a Pokemon that I would try to force all the way through the late game. Certainly serviceable in a bingo, but if that Golduck has to take on, I'm just thinking about things like blue and red in the late game, it's going to be a lot more difficult at that stage. He could have an opportunity to switch to this, uh, to the, to the mag, the Magmar. <laughs> You guys have ruined me with oh, we, we We've got the uh, park ball glitch, but it didn't catch. Yeah. You got it on the second try, though. Because, again, that the, the Magmar had Body Slam and Crunch as well as Zap Cannon, which he got paralyzed with, of course. He will check the movesets. And, honestly, I'd run with it. And he's got Surf. Looks like, yeah, looks like Snow Bear is main switching. Uh, off of the Golduck into the Magmar. Magmar Teaching does surf. have better stats. Yeah, very much so. Body At least slam. offensively. Body Slam, one of the best normal type moves in the game. Base 85 power has a chance to paralyze as well. Gives the leftovers to it. So yeah, I think this is a really smart decision by Snow Bear of uh, taking the Magmar. Yeah, 95-100 on Magmar. With yeah, 93 and he gets speed. the card key. And meanwhile, Horse, I think Horse is probably going to be uh, plenty pleased to be doing this stage of the game, which is the uh, rocket hideout sequence with the Celebi, because now that level difference that he got at level, he got it at level 10, starting to fade off a little bit. Because those early levels don't matter as much once you start getting into the mid game. Plus, you have the legendary experience curve that slows down the leveling process. But Rocket Hideout helps to make up with that. I believe this is eight total fights. He's going to be mostly still over level, get a nice chunk of experience to tack on to the Celebi to make sure it's still serviceable in some of the gym fights to come. I think he's got to be really, really happy with uh, how this ROM has presented itself, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Meanwhile, Snow Bear got... Uh, something must have happened, because that Golduck's still paralyzed. Maybe Did he not switch the ma Magmar up front for the uh He might fights? have decided to keep the Golduck going, and... I No, he... Something, something got... Something oh, wow. got him. Something got him, and I didn't see what it was, so I'm going to check the replay... Because I was focusing on horses screen at that. Oh, there was an Ursarine. And let's see what the what the Ursarine had for him. Oh, the Ursarine had magnitude. It rolled an eight. So that uh, that was problematic. Kind of rough to see an Ursarine as the second overall battle for uh, for that Magmar. But had a revives, kind of sticking with it. And once it starts getting a little bit more stat experience, thank uh, you, Wingage. Bear trade. Bear trade. Yeah, and the horse just just cleaning up these easy rocket fights one at a time, no problem.
Yeah, and you're you're starting to see the difference between between having a good main with good move sets and being kind of stuck somewhere between you know having two different options. As uh, you know, Snowbear was two shotting most of the Pokemon in the Kimono Girls, and really in the mid in the mid game, wherever you can one shot your opponent's Pokemon, you're gonna save time. And, and by the inverse, you know, every time that you have to two-shot something, sometimes you think, oh, well, there goes ten more seconds to my opponent. And right now, I think that is that is going to be the key difference maker right now, is that, you know, before we start getting that stat experience to get pull that Magmar up to speed, if he's going to be two-shotting things, it's just chipping away at just, you know, a couple more seconds here and there. But Snowbear on the uh, rival three fights, so we will be able to get a listen to the roamers in just a moment here. So make sure you got your headphones turned up, not to eleven, because I don't want to. I don't want to scream in people's ears. <laughs> But yeah, and, and and to my point, you know, you just saw Pikachu on the screen, and Pikachu extraordinarily frail. It's something that if you're not one shotting, you know, you know that you know that you're losing time because you just got you just gotta get those one shots off. All right, rival three down. So everybody, we will be taking a listen to the roamers in just a second. So get your guesses in. Well, I hope everybody got a better listen than I did because I actually have the stream muted <laughs> because otherwise I would hear myself through my own headphones and, uh, and that's something I usually can't deal with. It's called mixed minus, but uh, let me see if I can uh, pull it up myself. I may have had the uh, volume a bit low on Snow Bear, apparently. Well, at least I tried to not talk over them this time, because I think I did that yesterday, and, uh, and everybody threw a fit in chat, so... Alright, so what we've got... Raikou is Sand Slash, Entei is Dugong, and Suicune is Fanpy. Hmm. Those are those. They're okay. Again, Dugong's rated B for bulky water types. <laughs> and I have run a uh, I have run a Roamer Sand Slash before. Technically, a Sand Shrew gave it a, a rare candy. Had the Sand Slash at level forty one, uh, and it was okay. It it certainly was a uh, quite serviceable through most of the game because you are again getting that level advantage, especially on Snow Bear side. If you would go from a level 23 to a level 40, that certainly would make a big difference uh, with the fights he does have upcoming here. I do like Sand Slash, though. Yeah, I had, 100 attack, I, 110 defense. Thankfully, I at least had the Dig TM, so I could give it Stab Dig, which is better than not Stab Dig. <laughs> uh, so it, ha it had an okay moveset. Uh, but I did get bodied when I got to red. In fact, I think I was racing keys in that race. And I got all the way to red, and I think red had some serious ice moves ready and waiting for me. So that was actually a ROM I couldn't finish. But uh, kind of to my point, the level advantage, great for the early game. It can get you moving. In fact, having a level advantage can make a lot of B-tier Pokemon very usable. But you always have to think about red. That end goal, which of course is defeating red we got to defeat all 16 gym leaders in the elite four and then all the way up to red and if red's gonna stifle your b tier or c tier pokemon you might have to think about getting something just a little bit higher on that tier list by the way horse is almost finished 
with the rocket hideout sequence. He's on the Ariana fights for those uh, those of us that are fans of Heart Gold Soul Silver. So he'll be just defeating the three Electrode and picking up his next key item from Lance. Meanwhile, Snowbear just to fight away from Morty. Snowbear on the Morty fight now with the Mam the Mamgar Magmar Mamgar. You got you guys are in my head at this point. I'm in my own head at this point. <laughs> and Horse does one more electrode away. A little bit extra health before probably heading into the uh, uh, the price gym fight. All right, and that's a secret potion. Awesome, fine. Actually, <laughs> horses cleared out row two, which are all decent items to have, except for maybe the basement key. But it, looking less and less likely that we're going to have to use it. But he's now got his fourth go mode item. Just looking for cut and uh, and strength as of this point. Excuse me. And of course, fly. Once we get fly, then we're in really good shape. So that was definitely very efficient on Horse's part to find the secret potion, because I can assume that once he defeats Price in just a moment here, he's going to be heading west through Johto uh, and towards Olivine and be able to climb the lighthouse all in one fell swoop, talk to Jasmine, and then be able to take her on in the gym right away. Just those little time saves here and there. Certainly starting to add up. Meanwhile, Snowbear picking up his Storm Badge, getting ready mm -hmm. to fly when he finds it. Yeah, so Snowbear, we'll see if he decides to go towards Olivine first, or if he's going to go after the Shiny as well, which looks like, yeah, he is going to go after... Uh, Mahogany, Lake of Rage, the Shiny and the Rocket sequence, which I think is definitely the more efficient uh, and smarter point to, yeah, smarter play at this point. Especially with the access to serve, you're getting a couple key items that's not really out of your way whatsoever. Uh, and he will certainly be rewarded by finding the secret potion at the end of that Rocket sequence. Horse defeating Price. Getting the Soul Badge. That is his fifth badge out of the way. And then Jasmine will be the sixth badge. And this is starting to get closer to what we start to consider the mid part of the game, which is how do you unlock the rest of it? And of course, one of those key points is getting your seventh gym badge, which unlocks the rocket radio tower sequence, uh, which can, which is kind of a key player. They have the, they have the card key in hand. So once they start the rocket tower sequence, they can defeat it all in one sequence, which of course is 12 fights. Snowbear getting to the shiny Blastoise at this point. And again, five levels higher right now. I'll be curious to see if he catches it at this point. Wow, the Blastoise only using Egg Bomb, being able to two-shot the, the Magmar. Magmar does have very low physical defense yeah. and fairly low hit points. Uh, so it looks like Horse. So what we're seeing on the screen, kind of as I mentioned, seven badges is going to be really important here. He might be heading off back to Kanto to do one badge, one or two badges, and then be able to start that rocket radio tower sequence because since they don't have the ability to fly you got to be very cautious and efficient with your movement across the map especially going back and forth between johto and kanto he does have the ability to surf so he can take care of um 
either if he wants, he could fight Sabrina, not technically in logic, but can get you an extra badge. Um, he's heading towards Celadon. I was going to say that uh, fighting Lieutenant Surge in Vermilion City would also be an option, as you can surf around the cut tree in front of the gym. He's going to be checking out the TMs and getting some X items, uh, I'm almost certain at this point. And Porcel will be looking at the uh, TMs in just a moment. Pretty much selling anything he doesn't need. Getting a little extra cash in pocket. He kept the low kick TM, which is interesting. Yeah, that's a little bit curious. Hey, okay. kind of paused at the uh, try attack TM, and that's the one he picks up uh, as well as Thunder Wave. I think he's hoping it might be an electric type move. But here's the thing, he has Thunderbolt. Yeah, he has Thunderbolt. What could he possibly pick up that's better? Yeah. Unless uh, he's he hoping doing... for Body Slam. But if it, if it was Body Slam, he just picked up the Tri-Attack TM, and you're not getting that much more power. Yeah. Difference between them. But he didn't... He didn't confirm what he just picked up as Thunder Wave. I don't think it's going to hurt him in the long term. He's going to look at it and be like, ah... Oh, that isn't what I thought it was, but... Let's see which direction he goes from here. Now, in this case, so this is kind of... I, I like to play along here, and looks like he might be heading back to... Sabrina's no. gym. No? Just taking a long way around. I oh, think he's, he's gonna he's gonna try Ryan early tunnel. Snorlax. Right. He's gonna do early Snorlax strats. So this strat developed semi recently. If you have both the machine part and the access to surf, regardless if you have cut or if you have flash, you can go through Rock Tunnel. Uh, he will not be able to use flash because he doesn't have the Zephyr badge. But again, experienced players pretty much don't care about that. There's just one fight in the way here on Route Ten. And it's not that one, not the rotator, it's this guy. <laughs> uh, if you get past him, you go through a rock tunnel, you not just activate, but finish the machine part quest. He's teaching uh, Flash, but I don't think he realized he doesn't have the Zephyr badge. Yeah. But yeah, once you uh, once you activate, once you finish repairing the, um, the power plant with the machine parts, You'll, he'll be able to go back through Rock Tunnel, and then while he's in Lavender Town, get the expansion card, which is the reason why we pick up the radio card in the first place. It's one of the required items. It's not it's not a key item. It's a Poke Gear uh, slot. So you get the radio card because you need the expansion card to use the Poke Flute to wake up the Snorlax that's sitting right in front of Digla Cape. Once you uh once you do that, well, the Snorlax itself is a level. 50 Pokemon. And level 50 is 18 levels higher than, uh... Yeah, he was just realized he can't use Flash. Now is he gonna go for Blind Tunnel? Ooh, yeah, I think... If, it, if he were me... By the way, he just picked up the TM, one of the few PM, TMs that we do pick up in this run. Very easy to find. Uh, it looks like he's just gonna go through Tunnel Blind. If he got a map pulled up, it's, it's really not all that difficult, but if you got to memorize like our friend, friend Wingage, <laughs> Blind Rock Tunnel is no problem. A little bit of, uh, you know, just listening to your bonks. He's just got a couple more transitions to go here. And he's trying to find, trying to find that last staircase. Ooh. Oh, there he's got it. So horse should be on the last little bit here. We should see it. Yeah, right there. He's through rock tunnel blind. Just had a little difficulty finding that last stair bit. Meanwhile, Snowbear is taking care of the Team Rocket hideout sequence. But yeah, the early so the Snorlax strat, it's not a guarantee. It could be any Pokemon, and in, in situations that I've been in, it's honestly bad more times than not. You can level it up pretty quickly. Uh, it will be at level to be fully evolved with 
uh, within a level or two, but isn't always a guarantee. The last time I had a situation to do an early Snorlax strat, it ended up being a Mag Cargo, to which I immediately was like, uh, big nope on that one for me. But we will have to see Horse go backwards now through Rock Tunnel yet again. So keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> I believe Horse got a map pulled up at this point. <laughs> Just watching him pause after each transition, he's like, okay, where am I on the map? This is probably one of the trickier ones to find backwards. He seems to be doing fairly well, though. Yeah, Wingage brings up a good point. The TM that he picked up can often be a good guide in the last room going backwards because it is a straight shot from the exit. But yeah, that's no problem for Horse there. So he'll be picking up the expansion card at this point, which gives him full access to that level 50 Snorlax. Yeah, I too, I, I always have the map pulled up. That's always something to... Uh, that I employ. Uh, go through Route 12 and Route 11 is the fastest way back to the Snorlax. You don't have to fight that extra uh, biker that's in the way on Route 8, I believe. Uh, you go two tiles down from this guy. He doesn't. He only has a vision of two, so makes it pretty easy to pass all those other rotators. They can't see you. So pretty much just two down, straight shot over to the Snorlax. Activate I didn't realize that, that, that his uh, vision was that low. Yeah, his vision's pretty short. I used to just go all the way to the bottom. And then uh, I saw somebody just say, yeah, just two tiles down, go straight over. The sire is the Snorlax. But will he acquire that sire? Oh, with the Master Ball, no question. That's the people's champion right there. Qu acquire the sire. Now here's the funny thing. Um, I love Quagsire. He's just a good, good boy. That moveset was not great. <laughs> wow. Uh, water ground, honestly, a very good typing. By the way, once you uh, the once quad you weakness up to that, grass isn't that bad in Gen two because most of the grass moves are grass. pretty bad. Yeah, so think of like think of a Pokemon like Swampert, which has the water ground typing. Honestly, a great typing, and it's it is only weak to grass. It's its only weakness, much like how Kingdra is only weak to dragons. Uh, and all pure electric type Pokemon are only weak to ground. It's just that one weakness that you have to uh, just be careful of. Of course, it is a quad weakness. It's an allergy uh, to blades of grass and, you know, just a stiff breeze coming off of a uh, tree uh, might be enough to do that Quagsire in. Uh, but, but you know, honestly, I, I like the typing. And yeah, in Gen 2, there aren't that many great grass type moves. But, uh, you know... To that point, of course, that Celebi has a great grass type move uh, in Giga Drain. In fact, I would I would argue that Giga Drain is easily the best type, best grass type move in this generation. I usually go for Razor Leaf over it, just because more PP and be high crit rate. The higher crit chance. Mm -hmm. I agree as well. And then from there, of course, Solar Beam's the hard hitting one, but it is a two turn. Yeah, we do not like our char our uh, charge turn moves, except no, we're, we're, sometimes in the case of Skull Bash. Yeah, you get the you get the heightened defense. It, it's turn one X defend, turn two punch. Yeah. Uh, what I find kind of a uh, uh, what was I gonna say here? Um. Yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> uh, Horace is getting through uh, Surge's gym now, which would be his sixth gym badge. Uh, in fact, this kind of puts him in a curious situation. If he defeats Surge, and then when he's back in Saffron, he defeats Sabrina, that's his seventh gym badge. You got the Magnet Train right there. You hop back on it, you're in Goldenrod, you're four tiles away from, from starting the Rocket Radio Tower sequence, uh, which would be incredibly efficient. 
Uh, especially, especially since they already have the card key. Yeah, and and he he did do his time investment to check out what the Snorlax was pretty much at his first available opportunity. As soon as he had the machine part uh, and the ability to use Surf, he, he was pretty much making a beeline for that with the exception of just taking care of the rocket hideout sequence since since it was a bit safer to do that. The I think that's fortress, a good drop and nose faint attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say that's a, I think that's a pretty good compromise between safety and risk play uh, from horses end but yeah the uh faint attack even just gotta make sure you don't get crit at that point he's uh, setting Snowbird. up to plus six to deal with surge yeah which uh honestly isn't a bad idea he is ooh there's the crit but he survived it on eight HP. Uh, not a bad idea. He is at level 32, and Surge is going to have all level 40 Pokemon in their 40s. Oh, the Thunderbolt not getting the kill, though. Not quite. Yeah, he sets up one more. Oh, there's a crit from the from the faint attack that oh. entirely on that setup. Yeah, that's really bad luck. A de uh, definite couple minutes lost there. Thankfully, in Horse's End, he's got quite a few minutes to spare. Oh, and Not on that... Snow Bear's side, a Hydro Pump Omastar. Wow. Wow, he's not going to be able to... Def well, he's got the Blastoise as a backup. He should be able to survive this. Just give it one more go. Yeah, it's that... <laughs> that first trainer in Price's Gym surprising Snow Bear. But yeah, actually, that's that's why I usually try to catch the shiny or catch the pseudo just to have that higher level Pokemon just kind of, you know, in the back as backup uh, in case something goes that awry. It definitely saved him from getting a weird death warp, which I don't even know if where that death warp point might be for Snow Bear, because usually you don't take the mahogany center uh, if you if you can avoid it. Because you get that free heal from Lance after a couple fights in the in the rocket hideout sequence. And drowning the swag cargo. Yeah. <laughs> There's the fortress surviving a thunderbolt again. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see how many how many plus special attacks that uh, horse set up in this scenario. Uh, it goes sludge bomb for the bliss. He's still gonna have to three shot it. He's wondering if he's got an X-Attack. Honestly, not a bad play with the X-Attack, because it's going to be the same amount of turns. He probably only needed to do one, though. Because if he, if he X-Attacks and then hits it with Sludge Bomb, then it's out. Really risky getting poisoned by the Celebi, because it also had Sludge Bomb. Yeah, there's the Tentacruel. You go back to your special attacks there with Thunderbolt. Shouldn't be any problem there. That uh, looked like it was Surge's ace at the level 46. Uh, Snow Bear getting the... Was it the was it the Marsh Badge? Yes. So Snow Bear did, does finally get on equal footing in terms of badges. With his fifth badge. I think Snow Bear will probably take the route that I thought was going to be uh, the initial route, which is go back to Olivine. Since All he right. has the secret book. A vanilla thunder badge for horse. But that's his sixth badge. And it'll be rather it'll be rather interesting if he decides, hey, I think I can take on Sabrina. And honestly, if it were me, that's usually the uh, the path I like to go. <laughs> By the way, I two tiles of surfing in Vermilion City almost always generates an encounter, doesn't it? <laughs> and it's uh, a polywag. Life, life dead life de life, death, taxes. And uh, encounters in Vermilion Water as well as Route 36, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, to Saffron he goes. Uh, I honestly uh, like fighting Sabrina early. Wow, which he's not doing. It looks like looks he's like... going to go to uh, Route 2425. Yeah, the Hedge Maze, which is a nice nice bit of, uh, of a training arc as well. I like fighting Sabrina early because uh, the probability that she has really bad Pokemon is a bit lower. Bye she bye only has... Coco. Yeah, she only has three Pokemon, which are levels 46, 46, and 48, yes. But only three in that gym 
kind of reduces the probability with the randomness that is involved in these games. But yeah, Horace will activate the. Oh, Horace did he got the up? he got the old rod. He got the old rod. Okay, I think he was looking for fly in that situation. Horace, Honestly, where are were... you going? I. Uh, looks like he's going back to Johto. Uh, I just missed the uh, two checks on Snowbear's screen since they were both ch picking up those items in uh, rapid succession. So let me uh, quick look at the right, replay. Is Horse here. in. I mean, is Snowbear in Olivine? Yeah, Snowbear's in Olivine. He got the item finder from the. Uh, from the, the fishing good rod house. and the silver wing. And he got the silver wing from the cafe. Uh, what's Horse doing? Oh, Horse is going to go fight Jasmine. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's what it is. Because he does have access to that. If he gets to Jasmine, that will be his seventh badge, which does start that sequence, the radio tower sequence. But remember, he also does have... Um, he could also check the pharmacy item way out in Sinewood, which is a bit of a risky play, because since he doesn't have the ability to strength, he won't be able to clear that entire island with the uh, gym badge there, because you do need strength to defeat Chuck. Uh, they don't have strength or the plane batch as of, as of this point. But you can save scum, uh, and it would just be one way to check the item, and then you save to warp back across the sea. But we'll see how Horse plays this. Because, yeah, it is an interesting situation that both players are in where cut and strength are, gonna, are looking like they're going to be very late items, but not only are cut and strength late items, it's the badges as well. The hive badge and the plane badge, you need them both. And in this weird mid part of the game, the mid game, uh, I always find myself trying to prioritize what am I looking for? Am I looking for items or am I looking for badges? And then I try to strategize around that. If my priority is badges, I'm going to do as many gym fights as possible to try to find that one badge that I'm looking for, one or two badges. In this case, they kind of have to prioritize both, uh, which puts them in a bit more, bit more precarious situation. Where you got you got to be very efficient with your routing, especially when you don't have fly. It is very important that you are as efficient as possible. Uh, Horse did pick up the item finder from the fishing house straight he did to the not lighthouse. Pick up Silverwing though, not not yet. I imagine if he's trying to make his movement as efficient as possible. Well, this is the best way to do it. It is technically the least steps to do it this way. Uh, I, I can't see either player opting to get the Lighthouse TM, by the way, which is uh, an extra fight. He has got three Pokemon, uh, but sometimes if you're really desperate, <laughs> you can go that way. But Snowbear is on the Jasmine fight first here. So we'll get a first look at uh, what she has to offer us, a level 30 Dratini. Yeah, I'm. I I have to say that Snowbear is probably a lot happier with the Magmar than he was with the Golduck. By the way, Super Fang Pikachu kind of annoying. It's a uh, quite a bit of damage. By the way, uh, uh, Dratini oh. and Dragonite. Wow, Dragonite Ace. That well, he <laughs> very lucky paralysis there. I think that's a very good thing to. Uh, have right off the bat. Ooh, you're not gonna you're not gonna outspeed that Dragonite anymore as it used agility. Snowbear just trying to set up some X attacks to deal with him. Looks like that Dragonite only had Steel Wing though, which is not very effective on that Magmar. Oh, it did get him in the hyper potion range. Thankfully not full restore range, which would have been even more problematic. But there you go, Snowbear using the X items uh, very appropriately to get rid of the Dragonite and defeat Jasmine. That earned him the Cascade Badge, which is his 3, 4, 5, 6th badge of the day. 
Looks like he will have to fight one Kanto gym to start that radio tower sequence. Uh, Horse is going to pick up the silver ring in just a moment here. And I wonder if he's going to save Scum. Nope, he's not. He's going to go fight the gym first. Trying to put it in the back of everybody's head that uh, he might be heading towards the, the pharmacy, but uh, maybe not the best idea yet. If he had plane badge, I'd definitely consider it if you were looking for strength and being able to to do it all just in, in one go. But Perhaps without not. both of them, it's not a great idea. Yeah. The the best that you're going to find is fly. But looks like Snow Bear is going to do the strat that I just mentioned. He saves right before the water. So that basically, he's going to go... He's, he's going to go to the pharmacy, check the item. If it's fly, that's going to be huge. Uh, more important than strength or cut is at this point. Uh, and if it's not... He just resets, and he doesn't have to take that uh, surfing trip back across routes 40 and 41. Uh, horse not setting up on the Steel Wing Dragonite. Oh, he, he got a pretty good shot there, but he's just... That's going to be Hyper Potion range, I believe. And, well, he picks up the Kenya... Or he picks up the, uh, the Shucky first. Again, possibility of teleport is there. And it is a red scale. Immediate reset. Yeah, and he actually he actually did check what the if the uh, Shucky had teleport as well because that would have been valuable. Uh, but we'll not will not be marking red scale on Snow Bear's tracker because technically he reset after getting it, so he doesn't have it. Uh, but if you're running. If you're running one of these, you always kind of mark it off on your tracker that you picked up that item, uh, oh. regardless. Horse is going to do the same thing. Again, fly kind of proving to be so valuable at this point. If it is, did horse well. save? Uh, he didn't save on the same tile. He may have saved earlier, which would obviously save him even more steps. Like if he saved outside the gym, I think that would be the the most ideal location in, uh, in that scenario. I'm going to double check to see if he saved. Yep, in fact, he saved on the tile that uh, immediately outside the gym, which is All the right. most efficient. So when he resets, he's not going to be in front of Route 40. He's going to be in front of the gym. And that's quite a few, that's quite a few tiles saved. So both checking the red scale, resetting over it. But horse again, just more efficient with uh, with even the saving strats. Uh, Snow Bear hitting yet another optional. Uh, in fact, that was the same optional he hit uh, in yesterday's match. You just got to take those cut. Got to take those couple tiles into Route 36. Yeah, you're gonna get encounters pretty frequently, but. Uh, He's got to do it that way. Remember, Snow Bear has to still fight one of the Kanto gym leaders to activate his seventh badge. Horse is going to be going into the Rocket Tower sequence uh, as of right now because he does have seven badges under yep, his belt. He could just clear it all out, and that's two key items. Mm -hmm. Three if he goes into the basement. Which, at this point, you're probably not that desperate as of this point. There's a lot of key item checks uh, still left to go. And just thinking off the top of my head, they checked the pharmacy item. Uh, honestly, I think that uh, while cut and strength are the go mode items they're looking for, fly is probably even more of a priority as of this point, especially with, when you have the storm badge in hand. But really, the key items checks that they have left to go for horse, two in the radio tower, as you mentioned, one in the basement that they don't want to get. Once they get the plane badge, it's the flower shop. Easy pick up there. Uh, Snow Bear kind of doing the strat that I mentioned, early Sabrina, making that your seventh badge while you're as close as possible to the radio tower sequence. Um, they also have to pick up, let's see here, the old man, waterfall? the old man in Pewter City. Uh, the ice path item will be available in just a moment. 
And then beyond that, then you start getting into Professor Element, and the basement is kind of your last resort item. They don't yet have access to the Elm item, though. Correct. They do not no. have Elite Four access. Yep. And Elite Four access one of two ways. Either you have Cut, which gets you through Route 2, or you have Waterfall, uh, and you take it the normal way through Tojo Falls. Uh, I didn't see why Snow Bear reset, so let's take a look at the... Uh, how his Sabrina fight is going right now, as the lead is a Venonat with Crab Hammer. Uh, looks like it, thankfully, is still a three shot, unless he gets crit, which I believe is a high critical chance. Crab Hammer, yes. So I believe if if my uh, if my understanding is correct, the high critical chance moves in this gen are one in four to critical hit, twenty five percent. I can't remember if they're one in four or one in sixteen. I think I think one in sixteen is just the the normal ratio because I think it got I think it got nerfed to one in twenty four in the later generations. Again, I could I could be wrong. I'm not as familiar. So in this situation, Snowbear needs to hope he doesn't get crit on the second one. Uh, in this case, he just finishes off the Venonat when he can, because obviously that super effective move, quite annoying. You have a better chance to set up on the Metapod, which he's probably going to finish setting up. Curse is kind of a weird move. Curse increasing your, uh, I believe, attack and defense in most scenarios, but for Ghost-type Pokemon, it does damage to you a quarter of your own damage. Uh, All right, it turn. is 1 in 16 normally. It is 1 in 8 for high eight. crit. Okay, so it's basically like a plus 1 crit chance. Yeah. Well, yeah, Snowbear being able to, after getting through the Crab Hammer Venonat, three Pokemon really weren't all that scary. Just an Ivysaur and a Metapod. He gets himself the Boulder Badge, but more importantly, his seventh badge. So he can just take the Magnet Train right back. Very efficient routing uh, in terms of movement and also start the Radio Tower sequence. So there's the call from Elm that you see. Uh, Snowbear. Oh, looks like Snowbear is going to try the uh, Snorlax strats. Since he's in Kanto, heading out towards Lavender Town. Ooh, he hits yet another optional. Yeah, Snowbear kind of showing... One of his weaknesses is that uh, he usually hits quite a few optionals in these. He had three optionals in yesterday's winning effort. This is his third optional today. One of those was an accidental death blow. I believe that's the second Team Rocket member I've seen with a Mewtwo, by the way, today. I mean, was, it makes enough sense. One. They did kind of make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was one in Slowpoke Well, and I guess there's one in uh, Radio Tower. Uh, always gets me a good laugh. By the way, as we work through the mid part of the game, please make sure everybody that you are following both of our runners. Uh, Snowbear and Horse do uh, plenty of key item randomizer content. And Snowbear goes it one step further. He does the full item randomizers. And uh, in Paradox, I, I think it was uh, you and me and him. I think it was you and me and him. Uh, where one time we had such a hard time trying to find where the bike was. Is that when it was you... uh, behind uh, yeah. Tojo Falls? Yeah, it was in it was in Route Twenty. It was the Route Twenty Seven item. Yeah, that was all sorts <laughs> of dumb. Yeah, at that point it, it was almost like a cooperative effort. It was like somebody please find the bicycle. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember it... one full item rando I did when two key items like necessary key items were in whirl islands oh boy <laughs> yeah if you guys want some craziness uh yeah snow bear does lots of full item randomizer content uh which means that not only are those key items shuffled but their location could be 
in any item ball that's on the ground or that any like NPC gives you. It's it's just a wild ride. It's 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 less about like what main do you have and what move set is good and how good is your routing. It's just no finding the items in the first place is pretty much uh, all the RNG that is to it. It is quite chaotic. I'm gonna have to do some more of those soon. I I feel like for me it's just like can somebody like like a sub incentive kind of deal <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Uh, I've done a couple of them, and it's just like, wow, they get to a little ridiculous. To to be fair, though, though, a full item randomizer can technically be faster than a key item randomizer, just because if if all the items just fall in your lap in the early game, you can have a really fast, like, top-end time. In fact, as I was learning key item randomizers and got thrusted into a full item randomizer with Snowbear, I almost beat my PB, my key item PB, with a full item. Just because we had, I think we had Surf before even going into Union. Uh, I yeah. think it's possible, like, not very probable, but definitely no. possible <laughs> to get all of the necessary key items before Morty. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that's it's just, you know, blitz badges. Yeah, exactly. So, like, and, and I know you guys would make fun of me for uh, skipping Kimono Girls and Key Item Randomizers. Well, in a full item randomizer, it's just like, yeah, if you're fighting the Kimono Girls for one item, what are you doing? Like, it's very unlikely that, that this is going to be it. <laughs> you're better off going right of critique and just picking up that one item next to Mortar. Exactly. Uh, it is a, it's an experience. Maybe one of these days we'll get back into full item randos. Yeah, if you, uh... <laughs> oh, just quite... I, I, I can't even fathom the logic that you guys had to go through to make sure that, you know, everything wasn't locked and whatnot. But it does open up a lot of other areas of the game that we tend to not explore. Like, for example, Rock Smash becomes uh, one of the required TMs, which, of course, was later in HM. Uh, I think starting in Gen 3, Rock Smash became an HM. Uh, where it's like, you know, there are item balls that are locked behind rock smash rocks. And it's like, you might have to go that way through Dark Cave just to, you know, pick up some of those. Uh, well, wow, Urk is items. right. I just counted. You can easily get 10 items before Faulkner, which could yeah. potentially. All of them. <laughs> yeah, just be every required key item. Uh, that would just be wild. Because you've got one on 29, you have one on 30, one on 30, uh, two on 31, uh, you've got two in Sprout Tower, and you have four inside Ruins of Alf. And then if you wanted to, you could go grab one in Dark Cave, so that, there's an 11th right there. If, if, if I could interject for just a moment, could you look up what the false director item was? Because I missed it in our riveting conversation. False director was... Waterfall. Waterfall. No, okay. wait, no, no, that was of the card. That's something else. I looked at the wrong one, hold on. Uh, false director, he gives you clear bell, right? No, we already have Clear Bell. No, he gives you uh, Clear Bell normally. He gives. Uh, no, he gives you Basement Key normally. False Director. Coin Case. Coin Case. Okay, very good. So, because I just sorry, saw there's that, a uh, a long a long list here. Yeah, actually, that's kind of why I would like to revise that list to say like, you know, it's the False Director item and it's the Director item, not the what would normally be the Basement Key and the clear bell uh, items, because it gets, you know, yeah. it, it gets confusing and you kind of get backwards. Um, I just saw Snowbear pick up the, uh, the the Snorlax, which was the Quagsire, which he did nickname to acquire. I thank him for that. Um, but on Horse's screen, since he did finish up the, uh, the rocket sequence, he picked up the coin case from the false director and cut from the main director. So he is up to now five of the is six. Is he going he basement? Three. It looks like it. Yes, he's fighting the super nerd right now. 
Interesting. I wonder if he just thinks he has that much of a lead, or if he just thinks that, you know, sometimes you get in your own head where you're like, man, is the ROM this bad? You know, is, is, is the, uh, is it, you know, is Fly in the basement? I'm sure is what he's asking himself. Well, they don't have Fly, they don't have Strength, they don't have Waterfall. That's right, it was the Mystery Egg was the fan club item. Uh, which Snowbear picked up. Snowbear is fighting um, not Surge. I think he's still on the trainer before Surge. He got paralyzed uh, in that fight, which is, again, slowing him down a bit. Uh, but Horse is fighting rival four. Well, benefit. He can't be poisoned while he's paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I agree with Wingage. Without having Fly, this check's yeah, yeah. not terrible. Yeah, you don't hate it, especially since you did clear out nine of the fights before having to come in this direction. It is still a approximately three-minute investment because of all that slow walking and back and forth with the switches that you have to activate. It does take three minutes to get through the two fights. The Super Nerd, which has four Pokemon, kind of annoying. And then, of course, the long rival four fight and all the walking. Yeah, three-minute investment without all the extra fights. Uh, if you do it with rockets, it takes about eight and a half to nine minutes uh, based on how good your main is or not. And Wing is just right. It's a one in seven at fly, and there's and just it a could all and it could also be strength. So it's kind of a two in seven chance that it's an item that he needs. And if he is really routing, that this might be the most efficient check right now. If he doesn't see that he ever has to come back to Goldenrod. It, it might be a little bit less than three minutes. You know what? You know what could be scary though. They have the rising badge. Yes. And this could even this could get even more in Horse's head uh, because if and I think when he picks up Waterfall right here. Yes, he does. So he does pick up Waterfall and he does pick up the and he already has Rising Badge. The Elite Four is in logic for him now. Well, after uh, he needs he gets one more badge. One more badge. Um, which honestly shouldn't be too much of an issue for him. He is going to be heading back to Kanto at this point because he can't fight any more of the uh, other Johto gym leaders. He would need strength to do that. Both Chuck and Claire strength locked. Both in their gyms and then Ice Path. You can't even get to Blackthorn. Uh, but he does have to fight one more gym. And then if he wants, he could take the normal way through the elite four or you know through the victory road check tojo falls uh, but i think uh i think fighting a lot more of these gym leaders will be a lot more satisfying uh snow bear did just complete the surge gym getting his thunder badge vanilla of course and now horse will be taking on sabrina which shouldn't be posed too much of a problem and honestly wasn't that bad kind of uh to my point earlier sabrina tends to not be a scary fight until she is. <laughs> they have in, in, they have in fact checked uh, pharmacy. It was the red scale. Yes, the red scale, but they both reset over it, so technically not marked off on their trackers. Oh, the Venonet has Mega Horn. Oh, ho oh, oh. ho. So that Stab that was Mega the, Horn. That was, stab Mega Horn, and of course that Celebi does not does not like that Mega Horn. So good thing he caught the Quagsire, kind of a kind of picking apart, kind of just acting as a wall as of this point right now against that Venonat. Uh, Mega Mega Horn does have 10 PP. Uh, not sure if he'll be able to PP stall him. Maybe just try to get him off the screen with Thunderbolt. All right, takes care of that. Gets it scary. Gets the scary thing out of the way. Uh, had a super effective move for both of our runners. It had Crab Hammer for the Magmar, and it had uh, that ever scary Mega Horn for the Celebi. Let's see here. Snow Bear looks like he's going to be doing some shopping. Probably pick up some X items. Or should be uh, easily on his way to defeat the rest of Sabrina's Pokemon. Uh, just trying to be a little trolly with uh, with minimize. And there is the boulder badge. 
So that's badge number eight. So, looking at this, does Horse think he has to do Elite Four? Does he go check Janine or Misty? What yeah, is it's his a, play? Yeah, so so let's break this down. I, he is obviously this Misty. is what I would have done is, is go towards Misty because he did activate the um, the rocket guy there first, but he didn't actually finish off all those trainers and the hedge maze and whatnot uh, routes twenty four twenty five um, because he was a little bit under leveled for all these fights. They can be a little bit challenging, but he's got some experience under his belt now. Uh, so this is just kind of the easy. You know, no time investment play. I need to fight, uh, need to fight Misty anyways. Uh, get this out of the way. You can kind of delve into what his strategy will be beyond here in the meantime. I love doing fights. I think he's hoping for Hive Badge. Strategy. Yeah, I think so too. I think Hive Badge is a is the highest priority right now. It would uh, unlock that Left one, Canto. It would unlock everything else. To be uh, honest, except for strength. Yeah, uh, it, it would not unlock Chuck or Claire, but it unlocks all of Left Canto. Yeah, and actually, he, I don't think he can get both Strength and the Plane Badge to be able to do the other gyms in Johto to finish that off. So I think we're starting to see a more narrowed path here. If he gets Plane Badge off of Misty, he gets an extra check, which would be the Flower Shop in Goldenrod. Uh, at which point, if that's strength, then that, that's pretty big. I think that's the only way it could be strength at this point. But if Misty is Hive Badge or Janine is Hive Badge, if one of those two is Hive Badge, you're pretty much unlocking the rest of Kanto, which would be Erica's gym as well as the west side of Kanto, which has the cut bushes in front of Route 2 on the other side of Diglett Cave. If he doesn't get any of the that scenario... Then, then the E4 becomes the option to get to the Elm item. Urk has a point here that uh, Janine has to have one of the badges because at the moment we don't have Flash, so Misty's not even in logic. Correct. Well, yeah, she might a, not think... because we still have Elite Four and the Elm item to check. Yeah, it's and it, it becomes less likely in those scenarios. I think uh, it is entirely possible, and it's one of those things where we kind of forget about because we're we're so used to just doing Rock Cave in the dark, anyways, just to unlock that Machine Park quest as early as possible. And we kind of forget that the Zephyr badge is also required uh, as part of that. So, so I think the most probable. Uh, scenario is that Janine is the Zephyr badge, which would have given us our our Flash logic, which does put Misty in logic, and then Misty would be the Hive badge, which kind of unlocks the rest of the map here. But it isn't impossible that Misty might have Plane badge, uh, and uh, and Strength might be nearby to unlock a whole myriad of different scenarios. It isn't guaranteed, but I, I think what I said is probably the most probable. It gives us gives us the most flexibility with how the logic works out. But yeah, very inter very interesting, and uh, and honestly, it's it's a scenario that only horse is thinking about because since Snowbear didn't go to the basement and pick up Waterfall, Snowbear is probably thinking, you know, I just need to find cut strength, fly, you know, something that's gonna help out. But now horse is thinking, oh boy, is this really backwards logic? Really in logic? But Horse will be starting the Misty fight in any moment now. He also already picked up the item here, so we already know that's not going to be seen. Yep. Yep, I believe that was the uh, that was the old rod, was it? I think so.
Yeah, he picked it up picked it up quite early, pro probably in hopes that it was fly at that moment, uh, but didn't think that the Celebi was strong enough to finish off the seven hedge maze fights and then attack Misty to do all the other training first. But Snowbear is starting the false director, aka Petrol. That fight. The dude with the five coughings and a wheezing. And even that's pretty tame uh, if you go by uh, the manga logic. I mean, Petrol has like 50 coughing on hand at any point, right? <laughs> uh, we got the mineral badge from Horse's side, which. Yeah, that is a. Uh... So at this just, point, I think that just puts Janine in logic for him now. Janine is the only badge in logic right now, unless E4 gives. Um, well, no, even if E4 gives strength, he doesn't have the plane badge. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think uh, what we're gonna see from Janine is either hive or plane. I think that's the only way that the game can even progress beyond that point. And actually, Hive Badge would make sense because they have cuts, so that would still put the machine part quest in logic. So if if I had to put a bet, and, and I'm not perfect with my uh, guessing what the logic is and whatnot, but I do believe that uh, Janine's going to give us the Hive Badge because that puts Misty in logic. Uh, it'll put Erica in logic as well. Yeah, it'll put Erica in logic, and I think that helps to, us to progress through the rest of the game. By the way, you do see Horse fighting the biker on the way down. Uh, he is, if you have to bike up Cycling Road, is a required fight. And at this point, it's a little... You can't death warp on him. He's at too high of a level, so might as well just fight him on the way down. Uh, so it ends up being two fights on the way to Fuchsia. But yeah, there's not really any possible way you can set up a death warp because of the level that he's at at the moment. I know some people like making a fuss about going down Cycling Row. Like, like the fastest way to fight Janine is technically to fight her after you fight Blaine. So you do all of the left side of Kanto, Brock... To Blaine and then oh, to Oh no, Snowbear's frozen. Ooh. Ooh, a mirror move surf. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. That was something else. But uh yeah, in this situation, as mentioned, like it is faster to just surf through i think it's route 19 2019 uh the surfing routes near seafoam islands to get to fuchsia there's no required fights in that direction but in this case if janine's holding one of our required badges like the hive badge uh or per i think it's gonna be hive badge or if it's in some scenarios like fog badge or plane badge you gotta go this way anyways and it's not really any time loss because both players are gonna have to do it Hive uh, Badge is the most likely one from uh, Janine at the moment. Yeah. By the way, if you were ever thinking about uh, surfing the other way, like through from Fuchsia through Whirl Islands and towards uh, Cinnabar to fight Blaine and perhaps get to Pallet Town, you actually can't do it that way. Nope. Um, the, there's, like, construction. <laughs> there's in-game construction that blocks your path. You have to activate, I think think uh what's the, uh, the i think the check is to get to route 20 south of uh south of pallet town and as soon as you step into route 20 that construction goes away so you have to do it it's kind of a one-way street anyways there was the hive badge mm -hmm. yeah that puts four yeah, more badges in logic yeah that's that's pretty that was pretty much the most important thing that they needed at this moment because uh, he's going to go up Cycling Road and pretty much Erica's the next in line here. And then from there, it's about finding both the Plane Badge and Strength itself. 
And we're running out of checks for strength to be. Uh, I believe the next check that we're going to see is if we get plain badge, we'll have the flower shop. Uh, and if we don't, it's going to be the old man in Pewter City. And from there, if it's still not, I think it's just Ice Path, which we haven't seen from either player, or Professor Elm. Uh, because, of course, strength can't be on Chuck's wife. That is 100% uh, out of logic. The only but decent the... key item that she can have now is Fly. Yeah. It's pretty much those two key items are still the things we're looking for. Uh, Snowbear finishing up the rocket radio tower sequence, so he got the coin case and cuts. And since he too has also finished, ooh, is Snowbear also? Okay, I think I know what Snowbear is doing here. I think he's going to check the ice path item. So he saved in Goldenrod, which is a nice little warp point. Uh, he's going to go all the way to Ice Path, check out what that item is, and if it isn't what he's looking for, he's just going to restart and, and uh, warp back to Goldenrod to finish up all of his Kanto checks. So that's the route that we're seeing on Snowbear's screen right now, while Horse, as expected, uh, moving into Erica's gym. Yeah, well... And and for Snowbear, it's one of those things where it's like, do you think he's going to follow the same route that Horse did and maybe check the basement as well? Uh, I think that if Ice Path turns out to be nothing, he will go and check basement. Yeah, kind of getting down to it, because I... Do you remember Snowbear also uh, checked the, uh, check the Cerulean Gym item? Which was the, the old rod? I don't think he has yet, so I think that's what he might be banking on at this moment. He, he does have old rod marked on his uh, stream, so okay. I think he did grab it. Now Horace on the Erica fight right now. Snowbear taking a very careful across yet another optional. Yeah, and I know that we're getting close to the two-hour mark, still technically not in go mode, uh, but I think we're starting to see this strategy employed by a lot more players, and that's... Uh, by the way, Snowbear did find Fly, which will help to uh, claw him back in this race. Definitely a good item. Uh, so like what you're seeing with Horse right now, while he still has really two key items to find, uh, prioritizing fights is always a good idea. Because you gotta do the fights anyway, so you're not really losing time, it's just taking time. Uh, and he does find the plane badge, so that will that will help. I'm sure that once he uh, crosses back into Saffron, that'll be the, the next check that he looks at before heading to the west side of Kanto. That is the faster way to do it. Yeah, again, being, being as efficient as possible when you don't have fly pretty much imperative, but now Snowbear can uh, worry a little bit less about that since he is the first to find Fly. And of course, heading up towards the Magnet Train. Now, will the Squirt Bottle be required? Is it Strength? Yeah, if it is, I, I'd assume he'd probably just stay in Johto and uh, do those other fights. But we'll see. Just a moment here. And it is strength. So Horse is the first to technically be in go mode. He's got the six required items to finish off the rest of the game. Looks like he is going to be finishing off, since he has a plain badge and strength now, be finishing off the rest of the Johto gems, uh, which would be uh, both Chuck and... Claire.
both who directions, does he go to first? Yeah, both directions will offer one extra key item to pick up. We know that Snow Bear found Fly in Ice Pass, so if he goes towards uh, Claire first, he is going to find Fly. But however, he could actually go the other direction and think that, which is the direction he's going, think that Chuck's wife is holding Fly, which it very well could be. And this is the route he is taking, so he's going to go to Sinewood first. It is unfortunate that he will end up losing time off that. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of it's one of those things where uh, where you're technically in go mode, but fly is so important that you're still going to prioritize picking up some key items in order to save time. And he also knows that there are there's still a key item to check in Kanto as well, because as the well, old man in pewter. Yeah, as well as Elm. In fact, Elm would be pretty much the last scenario for him. Elm would um, be the he, absolute last check right now. And honestly, I don't think that he would check it until all the badges were yeah. done, if that were yep. the case. I think, I think Elm is the very last check that's uh, on his path. So he's going to do the Chuck Jim first. So essentially, this is how Horse has got it planned and routed out. He's going to check Chuck's wife for fly. Uh, I'm sure he's going to go towards um, Blackthorn and get the ice path item. It is going to be fly. If it weren't, then he would have to go back to Kanto. The old man would be the next, who usually gives us the silver wing in the first place, would be the next check. And then from there, the very last check is going to be the... Uh, is going to be Elm. And that's kind of the four items that he has yet left to find. We know that the pharmacy is the red scale. Uh, now that we know that Ice Path is Fly, it just leaves those three items. The Good Rod, the Super Rod, and the SS Ticket are somewhere intertwined between Chuck's wife, the old man, and Professor Elm. In fact, Professor Elm might be giving us the vanilla SS Ticket at this point still. Uh, unfortunately, I don't... Well, actually, Paradox has the uh, has the spoiler log. And I you don't, sure do. You don't, you don't have to tell us yet, but I think after we see what the uh, what Chuck's wife is, uh, I think you'll be okay to tell us uh, the difference between the old man item and Professor Elm's item, because I don't think we'll be seeing those two, and they all be uh, interchangeable. But hold on to that thought for a moment. Uh, Snow Bear did finish up the Hedge Maze fights. He's going to be fighting Misty before Horse is able to fight Chuck in this scenario. See, after Misty, Snow Bear definitely has to go fight Janine to get his Hive badge. Yes. But he'll have Fly to skip the backward cycling road. Yeah, so he will be able to save one fight in this scenario. So, yeah, I think uh, I think Snow Bear will uh, will claw, claw back quite a quite a bit of time, uh, but we know that horse had such an incredible lead through the early game. Uh, this Celebi is is it is definitely the best Celebi I've ever seen, bar none. It is needed you, almost nothing. Yeah, if you've had a better Celebi in a randomizer. Be my guest. <laughs> Please let me know because uh, it, it, th that has been absolutely incredible to see just how good this Celebi has been throughout the entirety of this run. Yeah, Snow Bear getting the mineral badge from Misty, and we'll be seeing the badge check from Chuck, which is the Earth badge. Yeah, yeah you have had... to use a Celebi, and that's usually a uh, yeah. And and hard I've had such horrible luck with Celebi, like rotten, rotten luck, uh, that I almost avoid it. Like I see it on my screen, and I just run at from it. Now it's just it's just like a done deal for me. It's like yeah, I'm gonna see Mega Horn on the very next move, and I think that was the last time I actually tried to use Celebi. Was like the first trainer in. Faulkner's gym was like, hey, I've got Mega Horn, and it's like, screw you, man.
Yesterday you found a Psychic, Thunderbolt, Salivate. I mean, where's my main luck? <laughs> that thing would be dead to an Executor, though. Yeah. By the way, Ath Athena in chat here is... Uh, I'm certainly scouting out the competition as uh, Athena will be uh, pretty much waiting in the uh, top three matchup of this tournament. Uh, actually, it was great to have a doubleheader today. We saw earlier today it was uh, Lord Bakura... Uh, who won with a time of 2.26 and fine, just kind of ca calling it quits from there. Uh, Bakura advancing to a top four matchup. The winner of this match will face Bakura in that top four matchup. The winner of that matchup then awaits, uh, is awaiting Athena in a top three matchup. And of course we have Snorms in the finals uh, have, has yet to lose yet. And uh, yeah, tall order to ask, but uh, any, whoever ends up facing Snorms in the finals will have to defeat him twice in a key item randomizer. Uh, not to say that it's not impossible, because, you know, it is a randomizer. There is randomness involved. Somebody could always find that monster main like a Mewtwo and, uh, and get the one up, at least in one match, to even it up. So, so it ain't over until it's over, as they say. Uh, so Horus is heading through Ice Path, and uh, I'm sure he'll be re relieved in just a moment to see his next key item check. Yeah, and Snowbear did head towards uh, Janine. He's on that fight right now, and there is Fly. So Horus officially in in go go mode. He w we won't be seeing any more items be picked up here. Uh, so, so Paradox, I know you have the spoiler log, and uh, and some people in chat have made uh, some guesses here. Uh, would you tell us what the old man in Pewter City is holding and what Professor Elm is holding for us? All right, the old man is actually holding the SS ticket, mm. which means that uh, Professor Elm is holding the Super Rod. Rod. Mm -hmm. So not, qu not quite vanilla there. It was a 50-50 chance. So yeah, that's us that's usually the point in the race where you're just like, yeah, well, marked off all my items. All I just need to do is make sure that I'm uh, fighting the right gym leaders in order, and and you're good to go. see what direction Snowbear is heading. Snowbear is heading towards West Canto right now. Which is actually an interesting play because I don't think Snowbear has taken on Erica yet, who is holding the plane badge. I don't believe he has either. Nope, so he's heading this way. He might be thinking, hey, if the old man has strength... Then he can start warping around and take care of the even the easier fights first. Uh, just doing some menuing, attaching cuts, and fly. Just taking it extra cautious on the bug catching rotator. And there is uh, the SS ticket, as you mentioned, on the old man. While he's here, I'm sure he'll be taking on Brock in the Peter City Gym. N. <laughs> It's always funny to see an unknown. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I need to run off for a minute if you're okay calming by yourself. Oh, yeah, I got it. I will be right back. Make sure to hydrate everybody. In chat, if you got your uh, got your water, I got my iced tea to my side. Make sure you take a swig right now. Yeah, as we just hit the uh, the two hour mark, uh, if if you are a uh, if you are just joining us, horse maining a Celebi that he found from a headbutt tree. Both uh, both of our runners picking a gold bat as a starter that had headbutt. Of course, the only one finding success out of that, finding the Celebi with an incredible moveset. It had Sludge Bomb, 
Giga Drain and Thunderbolt right from the get-go, only needing to teach it Surf this whole time, and that has uh, serviced him the entire run. A little bit of an early Kanto scare, but we did find the Squirt Bottle to progress through Johto, uh, the rest of Johto, in the early games, uh, keeping him from main swapping uh, in that early scenario. Snow Bear ending up uh, maining a Golduck in the early game. It was a physical Golduck, and he ended up swapping to the Magmar, which was the Pseudo Wudo. It was uh, still, they were at level 20 at the point that he got there. The Magmar coming with Body Slam, Crunch, and Zap Cannon, and he too has only taught at Surf up to this point. And that is uh, where we stand. Horse was on an incredible pace in the early game. I think we saw him beat Bugsy at the 21 minute mark and he beat Whitney at the 29 minute mark. It was an incredibly fast pace from Horse. It has tailed off just a little bit. He took the time investment uh, to go to the basement to check out what item that was, which ended up being Waterfall. Uh, so he's probably not going to be in that probably not going to be in the 215 range, which would be in that upper echelon of uh, key item randomizers, but certainly on paces, he's already on the Claire fight uh, right now. And actually, Snow Bear just finished up the Brock fight himself, as both uh, both both runners getting, uh, just pretty much just getting down to their badge checks, just clean up fights. Snow Bear's still lagging a little bit behind. He's looking for both the plane badge and strength as of this point, which by the way, the plane badge was on Erica and strength is the flower shop. So we don't, we don't get strength until after we have the plane badge anyways. And uh, yeah, Snowbear will be uh, completing the rest of West Canto as of this point. So he's heading down to fight Blaine in the Seafoam Islands. Uh, Snowbear was the first to find Fly. It was in Ice Path. He did go out of his way to check it first. And he did. He got a little bit of time back in that scenario. But of course, not too far behind. This horse does finish up the Claire Gym. I'm kind of thinking of how uh, he doesn't have that many fights left to go as he gets the Glacier Badge. Just double checking there. Uh, so in terms of this, Horse only has the uh, Pewter City Gym. Two fights. Blaine, just one fight. Blue, another one fight. He's got Rival 5, the Elite 4, uh, Lance the Champion, and Red himself. 11 fights to go. Alright, I'm back. Hey, welcome back. I was just recapping everybody. Uh, Horse only has 11 fights to go. So it should put him in the, if I assume correctly, kind of in the low 220s uh, to mid 220s at this pace, which is still very respectable. Uh, unfortunately, Snow Bear is still looking for both the plane badge and strength, which are kind of tied into one another in this case. I'm going to say 223. Six on horse because he still has movement to do as well right but thankfully he has got fly to minimize some of the backwards movements uh, but he did take care of all of the uh, all of the big gyms uh, that means that once he's done with blue he can immediately go talk to Professor Oak as well mm-hmm once you got your 16 badges, talk to Professor Oak. He gets rid of the guard that blocks Route 28, Mount Silver. Uh, you can unlock that fly point. Saves about 10 seconds or so. But uh, hey, any time save you can do is time save itself. Snow Bear finally getting through to that cut push. Uh, actually didn't really lose any time uh, not getting plain badger strength as early as he did because all the movement he just did uh, to get to Pewter as well as Cinnabar Island was required movement anyway. So, and since he has Fly, pretty much uh, no time loss there. And he's actually just, saved time with Fly already, so... Yeah, yeah, he just did it in a different order at this point. So, yeah, he didn't really lose any time by not getting strength as early as he did, but uh, this is pretty much just the last... It, it is the last gym that is in Logic, uh, save for Blue, and I'm sure he doesn't want to fight Blue uh, until after this. Just get your... Get the easier fights out of the way first and save blue as late as possible until you pretty much have to, especially when you have flying, you can work around. By the way,
the way, can we just point out that this entire time, Horse has been using the boy, which is something that you don't often see in speedrunning? Uh, there's a good reason for it, too. Uh, the boy's backpack sprite is a weird compressed file that constantly uh, compresses every time you open the menu. So you lose a f part of a second every time you open the menu. Like, it's just frame loss every time. <laughs> but, but the boy is pretty cool in this game. I mean, let's face it, when you get into a battle and he's got the, and he holds the Pokeball to the side with that, like, intense demeanor, I mean, badass. Let's, let's face it, the, the boy in Crystal is still cool. But yeah, the, the compressed, uh, the compressed sprites does lose you a little bit of time. And then it's it's almost it's almost a Pokemon speedrunning lore as of this point that like you always choose the girl character. Uh, and the girl is it, almost always faster. Yeah, I believe in one of the later gens. I wonder if it's like Gen five or Gen six. You pick the girl character because the boy becomes the rival and the boy does the catch tutorial and doesn't fail and has less text uh, so to not pick the boy saves you time because the girl talks more if you don't <laughs> uh, and I, for I forget exactly what game that is but it's just like it's just the funniest thing where it's like huh so the girl character is still at the end of the day faster I believe in sword and shield it doesn't matter whatsoever but it's just we're to the point where it's like you always pick the girl don't you yeah i mean casually like i tend to pick the boy but oh yeah casually i pick the boy but uh speak speaking of uh which and i i just want to give a shout out to a lot of our uh pokemon speedrunning friends uh there of course is the the psr marathon that's going on right now um and of course when you're done with this you might be able to catch the end of the Sword Shield uh, race. It's a three-way race with uh, Etchy, our friend uh, Garfield the Lightning, as well as Retro Tato are all running that. And they're doing the, uh, they're doing the Sobble route, the Shield route, which is the main swap of Palooza, and the Candy Floss route. Uh, really interesting uh, to see the different routings with the new, with the new uh, Generation 8 game. So uh, I think that's absolutely fa fascinating. So. Uh, so yeah, just kind of a casual shout out to them, but of course, make sure you follow our own runners as well uh, in our own community. It is just just terrific stuff. So I do believe, kind of in my rant, that we saw the uh, Snow Bear pick up both the Plane Badge and Strength officially in go mode now for him. And Horse is on the blue fights. Which I think is his last badge. Allow me to check. He, he has been. I, able, he has I can't been, uh, check. He doesn't have his tracker on stream. <laughs> uh, I I'd assume I'd assume that he would have fought Blaine first, so he would have gotten the rainbow badge there. So uh, Blue does have the volcano badge, which would be his 16th and final badge, and he'll just have a couple fights left to go from there. In fact, it would just be seven between between Rival 5, the Elite 4, Lance, and Red as the final seven fights in the game. But uh, Snow Bear quite a bit behind because he does still have the uh, the two gyms with the most gym trainers in them left to go, being, of course, uh, uh, Chuck's gym as well as Claire's gym, five trainers each. Uh, then he just has to go through Blue and the Elite Four and whatnot. So, uh, Snow Bear, having entered this gym, had 18 fights remaining. I believe he's taken care of a couple of them already. Uh, I think Horse forgot to ch uh, talk to Professor Oak. Yes, he did. And at this point, at this point, you just kind of have to eat your 10 second time loss there. Went all the way and was like, oops, didn't get rid of the guard. But uh, no big deal. He'll just have to remember to talk to Professor Oak after defeating the Elite Four. 
I'm hoping that he has some uh, PP healing items too, because he still has Giga Drain on his main move list. Yeah, and at only five PP to make that last through the entirety of the Elite Four plus Lance can be a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. But he does have Surf and Thunderbolt to kind of complete his move set, and. This is why I like, especially during the Elite Four fights, still setting up that X special or X attack, depending on what uh, what way you have your main Pokemon set up. Using that can actually help your PP situation. Because say like something lives on just like a couple HP and you have to use two attacks on it. Well, that's one less that's one less power point you have throughout the course of the entire Elite Four. Uh, so it can save time and it can save it can help with your PP management. Snow Bear just starting the Chuck fight as well. And of course, finishing up the rival fights. Alright, so that puts Horse at just six fights to go. Snowbear has 13 fights remaining on his end. But I, I have to say that Snowbear has, uh, kind of after that slow start with the Golduck, um, and having to take so much time to switch to the Magmar, which has served him much, much better. Uh, I think Snowbear has actually played very well, especially after main switching. It really helped him out a lot to, uh, I guess stop the bleeding, wouldn't you say? Because it, it just looked yeah. like Horse was on such an incredible blitz. He was just gaining time after time on his opponent this whole race. But, you know, the Magmar really stopped the bleeding in his case. And it, honestly, if you compared Celebi to Magmar, if it was kind of head-to-head -head the whole race, it would have been a lot closer. So I think just all the time loss was getting to the correct main in Snowbear's case. But uh, I like the decision of switching to the Magmar. I think that was definitely a good one. I mean, Magmar is definitely a solid Pokemon, just a little frail on the physical side, which could hurt in a late game setup, but it's still quite good. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Elite Four will down for Horse's screen. I believe he had to use Giga Drain once in that battle. So, something to just consider, maybe. Snowbear will be starting Claire's Gym in just a moment now that he got through Ice Path for the first time. Yeah, I think overall this has been a this has been a pretty fun match. Uh, we got we got two different mains. We got two. We got a lot of different uh, routing differences. Um, so yeah, I think this was a this was a pretty good one. And of course, at the end of the day, uh, both of our runners acquired the sire. So I really just couldn't be happier, to be honest. And the ROM really wasn't that bad on them. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't terrible. It was pretty much just fine. And... Uh... <laughs> I was waiting for that. I. Uh... Should have should have turned my should have turned the volume down on my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I got the warning. I was like, "There's an N on the screen." <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get N posed in just a second here. <laughs> God, I love just seeing the random unknowns. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think on one of the it was either Rival or the Elite Four. I saw an unknown X, and I was like, "That's a new one." Because, of course, the, the letters of the unknown are determined by their DVs, by some complicated formula that uh, I'll fail to wrap my tiny bre uh, 
brain around. But the most of the most of the trainer DVs are similar. Like most common trainers, if they have an unknown, they'll end up being an A. Uh, some of the gym leader trainers might have an N. Uh, X uh, happens see... once in a while. S happens rarely. I've seen R a few times. Oh yeah, there there are T's. T's happen. Yeah, I've I've seen unknown T's, uh, which by the way is the only unknown I have in Pokemon Go. Hatched it from an egg at uh, one point last year during one of like the ultra like community day weeks or whatever. The unknown I hatched is a perfect IV <laughs> unknown T <tea laughs> in Pokemon Go. So I'm like, nice, that's pretty good. Um, also a bit of lore about Gen 2, which of course is the first generation with shiny Pokemon, which I mean, if you ask any Pogo players, if they're telling, if they tell you that Gen, anything except Gen 2 is their favorite gen, they're lying because let's face it any hardcore hardcore pokemon go players are all in it for the shinies uh but a bit of lore about that because uh, of course the shinies are also dependent on dvs unknown can only come in shiny i and shiny v in generation two i did not know that yeah it's the it's the only dv combinations that a shiny pokemon can share with those certain letter combinations for unknown But yeah, I, I like to tease. I like to tease the Pokemon Go players in my community because they are they're unbelievably hardcore. Like I think some people have like four accounts, and they'll just go ham on the raids and whatnot. And they're all in on completing a shiny living Dex in Pokemon Go. And I'm just like, you guys are crazy. Um, so I like to tease them and be like, what's your favorite? What's your favorite Pokemon generation? And if they say anything except two. They're lying, because this is the generation that invented shiny Pokemon. And without shiny Pokemon, where would we even be? See, I've been playing Pokemon Go since it came out, but my, my favorite gen still remains at 4, and it's almost entirely due to the region. Ah, oh, yeah... Like, a lot uh, of the so Pokemon are lackluster, but the region itself yes. and everything with it was just so good. Yeah. Beautiful. Sinnoh is great. Uh, by the way, in our uh, in our little uh, side ranting here, Horse is on the Lance fight, so he's on his second to last fight here. And more Look times than that not... ATV. It has yeah, ice beam. <laughs> More so, more times than not, uh, our higher level trainers like Lance and Blue and Red aren't going to be as much of a problem as usual. Uh, we don't have the forced fully evolved at level 50 setting on. So, for example, Lance's Ace, which happened to be a Krabby in this case, if we had that setting on, would have been a Kingler otherwise. Uh, that affects that usually affects all of Blue's and all of Red's Pokemon, but for this tournament, we do not have that setting turned on. It makes it just a little bit easier to not have, in some cases, what is usually an unfinishable red fight. Because if red is just too powerful, if he's got the right Pokemon with the right move on you, it, it can make it pretty impossible. And there's been a few fights that uh, that have turned out like that for me uh, before. But yeah, Horse will be... Uh, see, he's, he's in the home stretch, so he just has to talk to Professor Oak. And I, out I have to, looked uh, at Red's 20. lead already. Because I had to know if it was going to be Wally or not, and it yeah, it has a oh, chance me, to be a problem. Oh, let, let me be surprised. <laughs> I'm just saying I it has a chance to be a problem. Uh, everybody, know, everybody who knows me, usually I usually just say, "E Speed Bear with a crit, crit E Speed Bear is usually the biggest problem." Oh, what is uh, what is this route? So He's going the, way, the best route in the game. Yeah, <laughs> Route 23, catch so many Pokemon. By the way, that item ball that he passed by is a TM. And usually, if you see somebody uh, pick Victory Road as the point that they uh, head down to Mount Silver, usually they're going to pick up that TM along the way. It actually doesn't even lose all that much time. It's like within a second of also taking it from uh, Viridian City. So if you want to take Victory Road or Viridian City, it's about equal either way. Uh, here we will likely see... Mount Silver lit up in the first room. 
usually some of those item balls can help to guide your way. Oh, I'm bad. I always use and, flash. Yeah, and Snow, uh, Snow Bear has completed his gym badges. He just got the volcano badge. All right, Horse will be starting the red fights. Of course, after a save. If you don't save for red, well, let's just say you got a pair on you. <laughs> I don't know, or you have a bolt beam Mewtwo and you have absolutely nothing to be scared of. Yeah, the level 81 lead today is a Dragonair. Oh, string shot? Uh, that might be something where you want to set up that guard spec so that uh, it can't drop your speed any more than, uh, than it is. Luckily, he's got a couple X speeds to uh, repair that. Ooh, the Dragonair has Hydro Pump, which could... That could very well have been scary if he was the... Uh, it's scary else. for the Magmar Sandstorm. Oh, something had to have So Sandstorm. much time loss. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Snow... Okay, so what we're seeing on Snow Bear's screen is he's going to unlock the Mount Silver Fly Point and then double back towards Victory Road. Uh, but meanwhile, yeah, Sandstorm just kind of more annoying than not. Looks like, uh, looks like Hydro Pump is the only attacking move that the Dragonair has, but the Sandstorm doing enough damage that... Uh, if that Dragonair thinks it could crit with that Hydro Pump, could very well be a problem, but we're going to heal out of that range. There's the Hydro Pump, and there's the crit on Q. That would have KO'd if he would have not uh, healed at that moment, so uh, good call there. Uh, the second Pokemon, Miltank, living a Giga Drain, just on the Magic Pixel, but uh, didn't have a... Looks like the Mill tank didn't have anything that could interrupt that. Pokemon 3 is going to be a Hypno. Uh, a bit bulky. It might survive this as well. Yeah, easily going to be a two-shot with Thunderbolt. So the Celebi's uh, legendary experience curve kind of coming into play there. Uh, but, uh, of course, Hypno a bit bulky on the special side. Thunderbolt on the Vaporeon should be no problem there. Just two Pokemon to go for Horse. As he sees a Lapras, normally bulky, but Thunderbolt really coming in clutch. The entire run, remember the Celebi had Thunderbolt to begin with, coming out of that headbutt tree on Route 30. The Omastar, the finale. Thunderbolt Omastar. carrying up through. Horse, 1-2-3 ABC is your winner today. Congratulations, he's got an official time of a 2 26 and is your victor. So congratulations, GG, to Horse today. I uh, called the 2 26 yeah, wonderful job. <laughs> oh, that is great. Man, yeah, Thunderbolt, incredible stuff uh, for that Celebi. Easily the best Celebi I've ever seen. I think Athena says that uh, he's seen one better, uh, at least at some point. But uh, yeah, incredible race. He, he, I, Horse just played perfectly today, wouldn't you say? Yeah, his movement was on point. He made a lot of very solid decisions. And Vesalabi was just a monster. Yeah, he, with that great moveset, Giga Drain, Thunderbolt, uh, and Sludge Bomb as just a uh, you know solid physical move to have as well. Of course, uh, Vesalabi having such balanced stats, just a hundred base stat and everything. Great moveset. Only had to teach it Surf that whole time, and there was a decent set of TMs to uh, work with throughout this run. But yeah, all right. Horse Tash says that, that his he... throat is in rough shape today. So he's going to answer all uh, questions in chat. All right, very good. Well, Horse, first of all, congratulations to you. you very played well played. Today. Uh, so, of course, you had headbutt right off the beginning uh, and right off the bat. And I just got to think that, uh, you know, at least in my, in, in my scenario, Celebi isn't something that I usually consider. But uh, how pleased were you with the Celebi throughout the course of this entire run? Give him a minute to get his answer in. Yeah. yeah, okay for a while. I mean, to be fair, Horace, you know, he wanted to switch off of it, though. Interesting. Uh, I, I will say this. Your beginning game was incredibly fast. I mean, you were through Whitney through the 30-minute mark, even with a bit of legendary experience curve. Uh, you did have the option. You did have the uh, kind of early Kanto routing with the Magnetrain Pass, 
did you ever think that, you know, maybe I'll give it a shot at Cycling Road to Main Switch? Was that ever a possibility or a thought that crossed your mind? I'll also say the Dragonair could have trolled him because it had Poison Gas as its last move. Hmm. Which would have made setup just annoying. Uh, not really he's banking on the Snorlax beans. <laughs> Something better than the Quagsire. Well, uh, you know, bo actually, both both of you actually caught the Quagsire just to have in your back pocket. I saw that. Hoping Gla Glacier Batch to check the Lugia? Yeah. Uh, yeah let me but... check what the Lugia was. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and while you do that, Paradox, uh, I gotta say that, that Thunderbolt was... Thunderbolt Giga Drain. That... It, it was a great moveset. In fact, you only had to teach Surf. So even though you wanted to main switch off of it in the early game, uh, how, how pleased were you or how did that progress through the mid and the late stages of the game that you just knew that the Celebi was eventually the answer for this realm? By the way, Belugia was a Murkrow. Murkrow, okay. <laughs> well, if this were Generation 4, we could have Haunchcrow. And... Yo, Haunchcrow is legit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ho Oh was a muck. No. Oh. <laughs> well, if we could ever get to a Ho Oh in one of these yeah. runs, I'll be, I'll be absolutely. It, surprised. It's so much time just to get up there. Uh, felt like you were pretty fortunate by the leads being bad on gym leaders. Honestly, you weren't doing too bad uh, overall, and uh, I think your early game really, really carried you uh, through this race. Uh, so throughout the course of this run. A, you wanted to replace Giga Drain for an Ice Flying Psychic move? That's fair. Absolutely fair. There was a Drill Peck TM right I, next to the route, though. On <laughs> Route 35, there was a Drill Peck TM. Yep, Route 35 was Drill Peck. Um, that would have been... Uh, that would have really, yeah, completed your movesets. But, uh, but uh, all in all, do you think there's anything that you ha would have played differently in this ROM because it, it seemed very smooth like you just had the routing very efficient so would you have played differently having uh maybe maybe a chance to play this again same main yeah not really yeah and, and that, that's how I think uh uh, you've played played very, very well today. Um, so, once again, congratulations to Horse. Uh, and everybody in chat should uh, uh, say their congratulations as well. Not forgetting the Rocket Password. Okay, I, I think I may have uh, been on a, a, a commentator's tangent uh, and, and missed that from you. But, yeah, sw small details at that point. Uh, congratulations once again to Horse uh, for, for playing very, very well today. Uh, he will move on to face Lord Bakura in the Losers semifinals. Yeah, that which is a top four matchup, and of course uh, we, we we're seeing Athena in chat as well, kind of scouting out the competition. The winner of Bakura and Horse will face Athena in the top three matchup, and of course the winner there will take on Snorms. They'll have to win two matches against Snorms uh, in the double elimination style tournament that we have here. Uh, but yeah, aw awesome stuff. Um, from uh, from the runners today, and uh, honestly, we're we're still watching Snowbear here. He is aware uh, that the uh, the time has been called on horses end, but uh, he's gonna finish up here. I believe he's on Karen. Just got three fights left, uh, so it shouldn't be a uh, much uh, <laughs> much longer as well. Uh, by the way, horse has the uh, box on the screen. I think a lot of people like to show the box. Uh, three hundred box is low for him. Uh, yeah, it would be low for Snowbear as well. I think the that comes down to movement to execution and i know snowbear is uh trying to do a little bit better he had snowbear had three optionals today horse had no optionals so uh, he did a great job there well uh, you have to remember they also went through uh blind rock tunnel so that'll yeah. up the bonk counter yeah it does up the bonks and even though horse did it he's still uh, saying that's uh on the low side for him so yeah i think he played really really well uh, i think if you don't have to do blind tunnels some of the best players will be around one, one fifty bonks throughout the course of the run. Uh, if you're really good, you can get it under a hundred, but I have only think I've seen that once or twice. 
God, I'm watching Snowbeer fight Lance, and it's just surf, surf, yeah. surf. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, to, to just kind of mention the legendary experience curve, I believe that Celebi finished at about 56, 57, uh, which is about average for a legendary. Oh, Pokemon. yeah, you, you can go ahead and cut stream, horse. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, the Magmar is probably going to be level sixty heading into that uh, red fight, which is about which is about average for a non legendary Pokemon. So I think the experience rate that uh, that we saw in this ROM is is pretty normal. By the way, can we just say that this Magmar still has Zap Cannon in its move set? Uh, I mean, X accuracies it, at this point. Yeah. Yeah, you got extra accuracies. It's gonna, that's gonna hit super hard. But just think about it. If, <laughs> if the move was, was uh, replaced with its flamethrower that it had at a lower level, could have had that flamethrower, uh, magmar, which would have been just terrific. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, Snowbear has made that magmar work uh, very, very well, which I, I think is excellent. I'm sure Snowbear himself is, is probably being like, man. This is so much better than the Golduck. I love yeah. Golduck, but it is not the best Pokemon. Yeah, B, B minus tier. It's on that, it's kind of on that marginally usable. Like, if you get it at a high level, uh, it certainly can make its way. Snowbear going to swag on us here by doing a dark version of Mount Silver. Of course, using that item ball to kind of help guide you gets on that last platform you kind of go to the to the up and left oh he made a mistake though he ended up at an item yep okay there you go he's he was on the right track got to make sure you get on that platform and then you just got a couple little cubbies to make it out and you're through because floors two and three are lit up Uh, I think that bonk count's gonna go up on a snow bear screen, especially when you get caught in those turn frames just right at the end. <laughs> Alright, he's on the Dragonair. Yeah, so snow bear are going to be completing this ROM. Uh, and he will start setting up on the Dragonair. Remember, ah, he's gonna set up the guard spec, but the Dragonair has Hydro Pump. Ooh! He's gonna. Uh, whoa, that damage! Ooh. Yeah, I put him down to the red bar. As long as he doesn't get crit, he should be able to PP stall no... Oh, there's the crit. Um, he should be able to PP stall no problem because Hydro Pump only has 5 PP. So it is it is definitely worth it to uh, to just heal and keep at it. Looks like it's its only attacking move, as we uh, heard before. So that's already three down. Uh, he's going to be healing here. Yeah, it should be... No w once the Hydro Pump is out... Which it missed in that turn, which is great. Um, he can sets so four. All right, spec again. Here's the last hydro pump. Uh, I was a range. Wow. Oh my god. Don't, don't you hate? Don't you hate that when uh, when the first attack shows you a low roll and then you realize it's a it's a range after that. Uh, thankfully, that was the fifth and final uh, final hydro pump. Unfortunately, he already used both of his guard specs. So he's going to probably get string shots uh, spammed here. So while he sets up, there, and there's a, there's our friend Darude. So while he's set up, he is at minus now two on the speed. So it kind of puts him in a precarious situation where, yeah, not having those guard specs is going to hurt him uh, to the point where it's like, do you just want to try it? try to out string shots <laughs> uh, your X speeds get back up to speed or risk it on the second Pokemon to get back. So remember he is at minus three speed at the moment so he's going to get outsped by everything and maybe he's just going to hope to get the Dragonair off screen it's kind of one of those risk versus reward uh, because the, the, the Dragonair's only attacking move was Hydro Pump and I guess uh, uh, I guess through to that moment ooh Oh, a Bone Club Vaporeon. Not Ouch. good on Snowbear Speed. He's going to have to reset here. So I think having a guard spec uh, in hand is going to be way more important to get through that fight. I was wondering why 
uh, Red sent out the Vaporeon second. Uh, obviously, it's usually move-based. The second Pokemon probably has a super effective move uh, for your Pokemon, but he's going to try to... Uh, he's going to try to put him out of Hydro Pumps, which, by the way, that Dragonair just missed two Hydro Pumps in a row, which is great. So there's the third Hydro Pump. He's probably just going to put other Pokemon out knowing that the drag he knows the Dragonair's entire move set and it has Sandstorm, String Shot, Poison Gas, and Hydro Pump. So he's trying to just lure him out of those Hydro Pumps. There's the fourth one right there. Which actually can't even one-shot that uh, level 30 Blastoise. Unfortunately, the Sandstorm kind of took care of the last there. Uh, he's going to move to the Magmar. Hope maybe he gets the favorable range. Uh, he's going to set up that guard spec. And it just outright missed the Hydro Pump. Fantastic. Okay. So he's got the guard spec up this time. He, he, he is now solid. Drop. Yeah, he will be perfect to uh, take care of all the fights. He just needs to do his complete setup and not worry about having the Dragonair use that string shot. So, yeah, a little bit trolly. Uh, Hydro Pump, uh, definitely not great for that Magmar, but thankfully a uh, PP stall. Uh, got the accuracy. <laughs> the sand boot. back good. up. <laughs> <laughs> the Dragonair's gonna kill itself, yeah. Yeah, well, at least he got one of the full restores out of the way. <laughs> yeah, every time you see Sandstorm, it's just a, it's just a troll, and you have to deal with it, knowing kind of what's what's lying in wait here. Thankfully, he's got the X accuracy and he's got Zap Cannon, so I don't think that uh, Vaporeon will be getting any moves off this time around. All right, looks like he's set up. Here comes the Vaporeon. Which Zap Cannon should take out. Yeah, no problem. Got that X accuracy, which is honestly a great strat to have. In fact, just like how Thunderbolt was so powerful on Horus' side, Zap Cannon's going to be just as good uh, for Snow Bear in this fight. And there's the Omastar. So actually, Red uh, throwing all the water types out early versus Snow Bear, whereas they were the last three Pokemon that we saw on Horus' screen. Uh, there is the Mill Tank. Going with the Surf here. That still might be a two-shot. Ooh, a Confuse Ray. We'll probably want to heal that off right away. Oh, yeah. That is not yeah, a good not, thing to have. Not take any chances. I don't... Ooh, the Miltank has Arrow Blast. Uh, looks like a crit would not have killed from that range. Uh, I gotta worry about those high crit moves. And then the Hypno, again, a little bit bulky. Should go with Zap Cannon here. She does... Oh, still lives. I think Crunch would have been the better option, though. Yeah, Crunch would have been his super effective move there. Uh, but it is still pretty bulky. He, he may have lived that, but Snowbear got through the fight, so congratulations to him. Uh, a well-played match on Snowbear's side. Uh, his official time ended up at a 2.42.17. And uh, Snowbear here already with us uh, in the commentary booth, the virtual one, of course. Uh, Snowbear, first of all, uh, congratulations to you. Thanks for playing out that ROM. Uh, and uh, I gotta, I guess, just gotta ask because you had to do the main switch between the Gold Duck and to the Magmar. And um, so, first of all, it seems like a no-brainer, didn't it? Actually, no. Actually, that was probably the mistake. Actually, switching to the Magmar. That yeah. Gold Duck was good enough, and as you saw quite frequently, the Magmar went down. A lot. Magmar yeah. is fragile. It hits harder, but it's fragile. Yeah. And, and that Gold Duck is a lot more bulkier. And it had a really good move set, so it, it wasn't actually straightforward. It was, it was a decision. I figured, you know what? I got paralyzed by this jerk, and I figured <laughs> I'd catch it anyways because I like running Magmars over Gold Ducks. And I saw its move set. I was like, you know what? Done. Sold. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think you were just missing a little bit of stat experience uh, kind of early on, uh, but it did look like you were uh, uh, feeling a lot better with the Magmar, especially just in, late in the in the later stages of that game. Um, but in terms of main switching, because uh, you had the Golduck, it did seem like you were semi-happy with it. 
Uh, so did main switching to Cycling Road ever cross your mind since you did have no. to take that detour through Kanto? No? No, absolutely not. My, okay. uh, I, I don't know if Horse did, but in my experience, it is has not paid off at all. Right. Uh, did Horse switch to something like that? I don't know what he did, because he finished no, putting uh, on. Horse Horse found a headbutt Celebi with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, and Thunderbolt. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I found the Gold Duck with I found the headbutt gold duck and I was a lot more happy with that. That's why I kept the level three gold duck because I saw what move it was moves what it was gonna learn. But I was just like, oh He stuck with the Celebi the entire time? Wow. Yeah, the entire time. Th I mean yeah that Thunderbolt Giga Drain uh surf sludge bomb move set on it was terrific. And he only saw Megahorn once in that run and it was on Sabrina. And Sabrina didn't really have that scary of pokes, so she had that crab hamper venonat, which yeah, the venonat had mega horn. <laughs> it had stab yeah. mega horn, so yeah, yeah, that was the only time we saw mega horn on horses' screen. Um, and kind of into into that thought as well, because you had headbutts and you saw the gold dog. You just decided to not go for the trees anymore. Uh, I, I wasted. I figured I wasted too much time. I had done two mm -hmm. headbutt slots, and I couldn't catch the gold duck. And so I tried one more time to see if I could get it, and I got Yanma instead. I was like, you know what? I, I, yeah. I'd rather just find something else. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else uh, throughout the course of this run uh, that uh, that kind of made you think, like, hmm, where is the next, where's the next item, or what, where's the next badge that I'm looking for? Like, uh, especially around the mid part of the game, like, how did the logic end up? Uh, routing out for you well i saw there was a lot of items but then i was missing some of the badges and i was hoping i was really hoping to get that uh surge would give me the hive badge or server or, or missy would give me the hive badge because i figured i was missing one key item which was strength mm -hmm. and i was hoping to find it in the old man and i realized very quickly nope nope yeah. so <laughs> no it's like oh no like i knew exactly it would be not to check the basement because i had a feeling just because i was talking with paradox before i was like you know, I've been tired. I was tired of having everything basement fly, so I had a feeling that it wasn't. He wasn't going to throw that at me. Not again. <laughs> yeah, not again. Especially after yesterday, when you had to. Yeah, that was rough, rough but, lot there. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I figure I probably lost time because I imagine horse probably got fly a lot sooner than I did. I thought I got fly decent in the high, but I don't know. You Funny actually enough, had fly first. You had fly first. Ah. It, w it wasn't by much, but you did get fly uh, about five or so minutes before uh, Horse did. In fact, Horse actually went to the basement uh, and fought Rival 4 uh, to go find mm. that item check, which ended up being Waterfall. Uh, so he t actually took that time investment to go look for fly and failed, and you ended up finding it first. But um, his early game was so incredible with that Celebi that it was a, it was a very early lead. And then after you switched to the Magmar, it really stabilized from there. And you two were pretty much just even to even with your movement and your fight luck and whatnot. But it was just the early game that ended up being the difference. I kept getting one. status all over. I swear I got yeah. Storms of Luck. I was getting like, I bought all the status items because I keep, you know, I kept saying Storms do. I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'll do it because I feel like I'm going to do it. And then it's like, okay, paralyze. Okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. Paralyze again. The thing that yeah. pissed me off was getting burned in in the slowpoke well. I was like, I'm pretty sure the next item's gonna oh, be a full heal just to taunt yeah. me. And yeah. I was just like, I'm trying to see if I can get slash crit. That's why I got rid of tri attack. I'm like, you know, I've been getting good crits with slash and a lot more PP, so I'll do that. No, it stops critting. It stopped critting at all. It just yeah. it's just like, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. You made the wrong choice. Uh... Yeah, the, yeah, the the fight luck can always be a. Uh... It's its own monster uh, within itself. Uh, one more thing I wanted to ask you about. How did that red fight go for you, especially with the <laughs> the hydro-pumping Dragonair? Uh, you know, I, I figured that would it. It was, it was the range. So I figured I could survive one hydro-pump. The problem was it was a range, and yeah. it kept hitting like the... I think it must have been the low roll that would have kept me safe because it, it laid, let me live one time, so... I reset yeah, there. The I was like, time, as but... soon as I saw, yeah, I was like, okay, you know, I had two guard specs, so I was pretty confident. And then, after I died, the Akbar died the first time twice. I was like, oh crap, 
And then yeah, I saw the screenshot. Then... I'm like, okay, I'm to resign to going last. And then as soon as I saw the bone rush, I'm like, no, I can't yeah, set up on this anymore. <laughs> that was that was a crazy bit of trolliness uh, on the uh, on the red fight, especially to run you out of guard specs and show you show you a range, but think. <laughs> Give you the thought that you could live first of all. So but wait, yeah. no, neither it, that's, of you... that's what happens when you run a magmar. You learn that you can die to everything. Neither and of you saw was... the last move on the dragon air, which was poison gas. No, I did see that once. Yeah, it missed. Silver thaw once. once. Okay. I, I saw the its only attacking move was hydro pump, which is why at the very end I was just throwing everything else, and I'm like, look, it's gonna eventually attack the blastoise. Although yeah. I actually severely considered switching to the blastoise. I severely considered it. I knew yeah. I would die to it. I was like, oh gosh, if this thing's bulky when I, sh when I come up, I'm just going to die. And then I saw the egg bomb. I'm like, yep. Yeah. That's, that's the blast right. voice for you. <laughs> uh, it had ice punch. It was actually considered. I considered it, yeah, but not very much. Be, yeah, definitely a, at least a consideration. Uh, well, that well, shiny so animation is so slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not. The real kicker was that I saw Magmar trying to learn bot, uh, village, and I'm like, if it was almost any other poke, I would have immediately, I would have taught <laughs> yeah. it. But I'm like, I can't even hit, take a hit from full. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that well, anyways, was something. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thanks again for uh, for not just being a uh, participant uh, in this tournament, but being one of the uh, the figureheads that uh, got us all together to. Uh, really put this together you know we uh we all couldn't do this without you snow bear so uh thanks for being a uh, great example by uh throwing your name in the hat as well and, uh, i'll be yeah. honest i'm surprised i got this far i was like you know what I'll, I'll probably just win twice and lose and then lose again and then when i lost the fine i got really really i was like you know what no no i i, I must win <laughs> so i started pushing myself and i felt all the trash talk i kept trash talking wingage and i was like i got to pay off because i was like okay it's like a 50 50 chance i win against him i had no qualms about horse about <laughs> winning against horse but i'm like just i wanted to get a little bit i thought i would be happy with top eight but then i was like you know top six sounds pretty good yeah <laughs> i love those budding rivalries that are starting to to come out of the tournament everyone's kind of got you know looking across the way i mean like you you and me are gonna throw down, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I think and, I used all my good Brian. luck yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my bad luck actually started to, as as a few hours ago. I was like, my keyboard just completely fell down. I was like, oh okay, that's that's not a good omen. But no, I I mean, uh, I expected to lose the horse. He's much better with the execution, so I, I it was a lot of fun, and I'm just glad to be honest to be out at this point. Because then I can go beyond the key items and go to full items, and if I can yeah. get anyone to <laughs> full items, it's a lot more fun. Oh, don't don't worry. Uh, um, Paradox <laughs> and I were remembering about the time that we had to find the bicycle on Route Twenty Seven. Oh, that item. was that was so fun. We, it's gone yeah, crazy. We mentioned that during this race. Yeah, uh, I'll be getting again. back into full items soon. Yeah, I'll maybe again. added more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks again for uh, for being a part of this tournament. Uh, so coming up, the next match is going to be Horse versus Bakura. That is a top four matchup. Uh, that will be scheduled pretty shortly because pretty much uh, we're at the point where each match will feed into itself. So we only have uh, three, matches three, more, three matches left plus a potential uh, double header for the final. So yeah, Bakura versus Horse in the... Uh, top four matchup the winner will take on athena in the top three matchup and then the winner there will take on snorms in the final so look for that on the uh set of rando mania channels again make sure to give a follow to our runners today and snow bear and horse uh i'm thomas patrick wx and paradox was a, a great co-commentator with me and uh paradox was also doing the uh the restreaming today so yeah. thanks for that paradox Thank no you, problem. everyone, for all of it. Thank you, T-Pad. Thank you, Paradox. Thank you, Horse. And thanks, everyone, for watching. And stay tuned for the next match to be announced. Yep, we'll see you next time, everybody.